This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Oh, hello there. No, nice to meet you. Well, let's get back to it. Texts and tweets and such from last night. Tony texts, the truth is Lee Anderson looks like Beaker from the Muppets. Well, that is just a fact. Less like a, an angry toilet brush and more like Beaker from uh, the Muppets. That is completely correct in every respect, Tony. Rory texts, I was considering uh, trying my hand at racism, but, t <laughs> but £10 million is a bit steep for me. Do you think Reform UK would accept less for me to absolve myself of any guilt? Absolutely. Yes. Make them an offer they can't refuse. Matt says, it's all a lot of fuss about nothing. I mean, what can you get these days for 10 million quid, apart from about a squillion nurses? And um, how many more of these from uh, yesterday? Just boatloads. And they're already uh, piling in from today. Good grief. Six pages worth. <laughs> Ashling says, my friend uh, full on keeps many rats. She is so attached to them, it's very sweet. I can't personally get it, but she loves them. But every other week, she seems to lose one or another. I'm not sure how best to keep supporting her. Um, well, whatever you do, uh, Ashling, always uh, wash your hands after uh, contact. And don't support her. Try to wean her off them. Tariq says, what do you make of America's best? All they can do is uh, Trump versus Biden again. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty depressing, actually, isn't it? I mean, good grief. Uh, uh, going through that again... But I think the world is, um, I get the feeling we, we've, we've sort of given up before it's even uh, begun. You know, it's November. There's a lot that could happen between now and November, including the death of one or uh, both of them. I mean, they, they are getting on, eh? Absolutely. So, um, uh, but I, I think there's sort of a shrug of resignation. Oh, well, Trump's going to win it. Based on what? Because the polling is good now? Half of America wouldn't um, vote for Donald Trump if uh, you paid them and at least a large at least a large percentage that makes absolutely no sense at least a small percentage at least some in the other half of uh, America can't stand Donald Trump even though they uh, would uh, prefer uh, Vladimir Putin rather than uh, Joe Biden so I don't think it's uh, it's a done deal yet there is hope there is hope Teresa says Nick, Sunak says he often leaves the office to go home to make the bed. Isn't that what they accuse people who work from home of doing and say that they should be back in the office? Inconceivable, says Teresa, I think is uh, channeling the Princess Bride there. With inconceivable. Uh, Matt says, the only thing that's got any better under this government is the online tax portal. That's world beating. The tax portal. The thing that ensures they get money coming in. Funny that, says Matt. Although, try and, try and getting them on the phone. Chris says, uh, I'll tell you what's better under the Tories, mate. The amount of food banks in the UK. They've knocked that one out of the park. No need to thank me. All right, then I won't. Yeah, I think uh, Smoke said it was heartening, didn't he? My view. Yeah, my view is um, that it was. it's heartening, all the uh, food banks, said Smug. <laughs> Somewhat missing the point. But I think missing the point is what he does for a living. Bob text, what a complete mess this country's in. It's like the Muppet Show. Yeah, except uh, fewer laughs. And the pe people responsible are going to get a pay rise. MPs are to receive an inflation-busting 5.5% pay rise in April. This is, despite the cost of living crisis and despite the often cited effect that big wage rises will have on inflation. You remember, that's why junior doctors are not to have a pay rise to bring their hourly pay to what they might earn delivering pizzas not babies. For the first time, MPs' pay is set to top £91,000 a year, thanks to a 5.5% increase. The Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority announced that MP pay rises will, com will compare to senior civil service pay rises agreed recently. That's why they agreed them recently, is because MPs' pay is uh, linked in some way to uh, senior civil service pay rises. That's why they just waved that through and said, absolutely no problem at all, how much would you like? I'll give you a blank check, just write in the figure of your choice. Doctors, meanwhile, have um, absolutely no connection to uh, MPs' pay, so they get... Nothing. 
The Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority announced that MPs' pay rises will compare to senior civil service pay rises agreed recently. And, yet, and I think we should be doing air quotes with our fingers around the word independent. The Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority. I mean, what's the point of having a supposedly independent body that gives MPs a pay rise that is larger than they could possibly have got away with when they used to set their own pay? I mean, why don't we just go the whole hog and appoint their mothers to tell MPs how much they're worth? The Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority preempted a backlash from cash-strapped voters saying, determining MPs' pay is not a responsibility we take lightly. Oh, well. That makes it all better, doesn't it? No. <laughs> they aren't taking it lightly. Do they mean they're not laughing while they're considering it? Or they seriously think that this lot are worth the money? The Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority said, Our pay principles require us to balance the need to enable people from all backgrounds and financial positions to serve in Parliament with the reality of what is going on in the wider economy. The wider economy. That means that the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority do not think that making less than £90,000 a year plus a quarter of a million pounds in expenses is enough to cope in the current economic circumstances. Circumstances which have been created by the very people that are being rewarded. Because if the government can claim that they brought inflation down, then why did they not use their superhuman powers to prevent it from going up in the first place, eh? Um... Hmm? I mean, they can't claim to have the power to bring inflation down and that they have no power to stop it going up, can they? Except they do. Claim just that. And then there's the dismal stewardship of every institution that they are supposed to be running for the benefit of the nation. And, of course, I'm going to say the B word, so prepare yourself. Oh, no. Brexit. <laughs> The grift that keeps on giving for those who bet against the economy while persuading us to leave. But it's worse than that, because MPs' wages have increased by 39% since 2010. Compared to, for the average Brit, guess. MPs' wages have gone up by 39% since 2010. Compared to, for the average Brit, 8%. Their pay went up 39%. Hours went up eight. You can go ahead and scream now if you like. <coughs> Just let it out. You know, if a typical voter in 2010 had achieved the same pay rise over the last 14 years as uh, MPs have enjoyed, we'd all have an extra eight grand a year in our pockets. You believe that? But we can't have that because when we get a large pay rise, it causes inflation and that would be bad. But when they get a large pay rise, it doesn't cause inflation. And that's good. You understand the difference? No. No, me neither. And to make us drift off and think of something else, they use the same argument they deploy to persuade us that taxing the rich is a bad idea because we must encourage the wealth creators. And that would be true if the wealth that is created did not all go to the people at the very top as evidenced by the fact that if us poor dopes who pay taxes have been rewarded as MPs have been, we'd be eight grand a year better off. But we're not. So where's the money gone? Um. I mean, the regime seems to act like a giant siphon, sucking the money from the many and gifting it to the few in the donor class. But it's worse than that. Because it's not just the bone-idle layabouts and charlatans and grifters and con artists of the House of Commons, some of whom are good people, I suppose. The peers in the House of Lords are also on track to receive a similar increase to their daily attendance allowance, which, remember, is tax-free. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, for some reason they don't pay tax. And the reason is, probably, because the people who don't pay tax are the very same people who came up with that rule. Damn it. Yeah. The Lords can currently pocket 342 quid just for turning up each day. Oh. And you should keep in mind that when certain 
oily charlatans boast about how often they show up to the Lords, it's very doubtful they're actually working. It's more likely that they just popped their heads around the corner, registered their presence, and then sloped off for a subsidised slap-up meal at our expense. Booze. But it's worse than that. Because in January last year, Sky News revealed that MPs had raked in over... Grip onto something firm, you're not going to like it. £17 million of outside earnings since 2019 on top of their salaries. £17 million. Doing something while we're paying them to do something else. And Tory MPs made £15.2 million of that £17 million. Isn't that totally stunning? No. No. So the Tories have 56% of the MPs in the Commons, but they earned 90% of the money that MPs coined in from second, third and fourth jobs. They have 56% of the people, and, they, and those people earn 90% of the money. And here's what they actually think about this. This week it was reported that one minister wants to avoid an early general election as it will give younger MPs time to earn a few more months' salary over the summer when they're not actually sitting, when they're on holiday. Don't have it before they go on holiday. Have the election after they go on holiday so they can earn a couple more months' money. <laughs> Squeezers for every last penny before sloping off to try and get another job that pays like they've robbed a bank. What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Everything is going extremely well. I think, you, I think we can call that a crash fade. Craig says, Trump told his dinglings, we have languages coming into our country. Nobody ever even speaks these languages. They're truly foreign languages because nobody speaks them. Uh, when asked, Trump said he didn't remember saying that he has one of the best memories. <laughs> Despite the fact that he is cognitively there. He's a smart person. Trust me, I'm like a smart person. Yeah, he's a very, very smart person. And if he gets it in order, he gets extra points. If you get it in order... You get extra points. Extra points for getting it in order. If you get it in order, you get extra points. <laughs> it's painful. I can't believe that that man is, um, has got a 50-50 chance of being the next leader of the free world. Not free for very much longer if he uh, has anything to do with it. Sutex, the problem with uh, Titchy suit size is that he totally lacks the courage of his convictions. Mind you, that could be something to do with the fact that he doesn't seem to have any convictions. <laughs> yeah, apart from the love of money. Yeah, it's all about the money, honey. Let's have a call in uh, Cowbridge, Wales. Chris. Ah, Nick, it's wonderful to speak to you. Big fan of your show. Oh, thanks. Um... Uh, you, you were talking about this independent uh, body that uh, whenever any minister is challenged about their pay, always says, well, it's an independent thing, yeah. especially with uh, titchy suit size. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wonder if anybody's taking any time to actually look at this independent body and question how independent they really are. Right. Because the chairman of this um, independent body is an ex-prime uh, minister's advisor. Um also, they're funded by the Treasury with just a little bit of digging. So I really do wonder how independent this is, and I don't see them really pushing back too hard on it at all. It's a, a shield with which to uh, deflect any criticisms, because MPs, you remember, used to set their own pay, and they got yeah. criticised for it every time they did it. And so they said, well, we'll give it over to an independent, he said, wiggling his fingers in the air, like in, he's uh, using inverted commas, an independent body, which can then set our pay for us. And they get, <laughs> this independent body then gave them more money than MPs could ever have got away with if they had still been set in their own pay. So it's not very independent. It's about as independent as, um, as uh, asking yourself if you're worth a pay rise. <laughs> well, it, it's weird because like, on their own website, you can see who all the board members are. Yeah. And half of them are OBEs or CBEs or Danes. Of course. And you think, you think, well... I'm wondering here, how many of these are sort of like 
fans of the Tory party. Yeah. And I, there's nothing to suggest one way or the other, and I don't want to make any inflammatory statements, but <laughs> it, it does... <laughs> it does make you sort of wing, you know, sort of wonder, sort of ding, ding, ding. Yeah. You know, is this like Ben favours for the boys? Yeah. Well, of course it is. I mean, it, is there any question about that? I mean, they're all of a type. It's not that they, it's not that they don't know each other. They all hang out in the same building for crying out loud. They all oh, have lunch they, with each other, suggest no. uh, you know how much that they're worth, and say, uh, right, you are. There, there is an interesting detail I think it might make you laugh is the one person on there who looks like they're nothing to do with government. Mm. Um, I don't know. <laughs> guess, guess which, where he, which type of business he comes from. Uh, banking. No, he's a geologist. <laughs> a geologist? He's a geologist. Right, so, I so he's... It, I looked he, it all up this morning. Right, so he's, uh, he's used to um, dealing with old fossils. My view. Yeah, okay. Well, all right. The Thank interesting thing... The, There's another interesting, interesting thing. thing. Yes, is is uh, wonder how it would work if you had any member of the BMA or the nurses union oh. on that board. How yeah. that would work yeah, out? I, I don't think it would work out very well. Again, uh, not, thank you, uh, time. right? Okay, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. That's the same number as uh, our uh, WhatsApp number. The WhatsApp number is the same as the phone number, which is coincidental. 0345 Jim says we're getting another PM penny. Another, there's no, another PM penny. Another PM penny. <laughs> Jim, can I interest you in some punctuation? No. We're getting another PM, says Jim. Penny, she will scare Sir Per Labour. P-E-R-R-R-R. R R R. I don't know what that means. What's uh, per labour? She ain't going to scare her. I mean, her own people call her not um, uh, Penny, uh, what's it? They call her Pretty Dormant. Not Penny Mordant. Pretty Dormant is what they call that's her. That's her own people. Oh, what have we done to deserve this? It must have been really, really awful. I wish I could remember what it was. Chrissy texts. It's curious how we you were there. Chrissy texts. It's curious how we use the word "installed" when we are talking about new leaders taking up their post. Proof that they are merely automatons. Affirmative. Or art installations. <laughs> Actually, some of them do look like art installations. My view. Yeah, him particularly. <laughs> um, he could be a Mogdiliani. <laughs> uh, art installations where they stand around doing nothing and bespectacled to toffs pretend there's a good reason for their existence, says Chrissy. Can we uninstall them, like software? Perhaps a countrywide restore point? Yes. I think, at the very least, we should try turning them off and on again, see what happens. And Nick texted, did you ever get round to trying scampi fries? No, I did not. Abso notly. Although somebody sent me some and um, I'm still not going to eat them. But thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> no, 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 no. 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 No, not for me. No. Uh, Cheryl says, just wondering, are the residents of Thwing known as Thwingers? <laughs> yeah, I seriously doubt it. I mean, you know, I've, I don't know anything about them, but it doesn't prevent me from having a strong opinion. And I'm thinking, no. No, 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 no. I bet they do not swing. No pampas grass are near them. South Kensington. Leonard. Yeah, good. Nick, how are you? Good, thanks. Yeah, listen, Nick, I remember many years ago travelling to Italy in the 80s and uh, I, I always have a fond uh, sort of memory of the the, uh, the dramas and, and the trials and the tribulations of the the corruption there. And I thought I'd make a point is that this country is actually a sort of, uh, it's a parody of what Italy was in the 80s, to be honest. It's actually, it's, 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 it's ten times worse. The corruption, I mean... Do you remember, you know, when they were always changing governments like two or three times a year in Italy? You must remember that. In Italy? Absolutely. In Italy, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But now Italy's kind of much more sort of stable and democratic than we are. 
So it's kind of turned the tables, really, hasn't it? Because I always remember people mocking Italy for being really corrupt. Yes. In various other countries, you know. But it seems to me that Britain's... I, I really can't see any... I don't see, once it gets to this state, that it's going to change for at least two decades. Uh, well, it could change the very uh, minute after the next general election. I mean, I, I think up until that point, the uh, the regime will be uh, trying to siphon off as much as they possibly can and uh, meanwhile strip the country for parts and pour uh, sand in the tank to make totally sure that the incoming uh, government can't actually make it go. Well, who's this shadow... Um uh, what, uh, she, she, she reminds me of a Tory. I'm, I'm, she's a kind of shadow something or another, secretary of something. <laughs> uh, who, who is she? The one that's always who, in blue. Who is this shadowy presence of which you speak? Well, I, 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 can't, I, don't, I can't remember what she's the shadow of. But right. she's, she's a shadow cabinet minister. Right, almost. well, she sounds but very, she, very, very shady, she, the way you're she's describing the one her. That's Leonard. talking about raising all the council tax to, like, where everybody's going to pay something like £1,200 extra a year on top of what they already pay. Right. What's her name? She looks like a Tory, to be honest. <laughs> what does a Tory look like? <laughs> well, but she looks a bit like something out of, I don't know, the Adams Family Tory oh, look. You know, right. Sort of that, that hairstyle. That hairstyle? Which is probably paid for by the taxpayer as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no I mean, doubt. All their makeup, like, yeah. um, mm -hmm. I read, I think, Pretty Patel, she used to get her eyes plucked, her eyebrows plucked, and <laughs> the lipstick done, and all, you know, it's all paid for by the taxpayer. And by the way, I can mm -hmm. say something for certain. Yes. Is while we were all in lockdown, I, I actually know somebody who worked at the, uh, in the, the you know, in, par in, in the Houses of Parliament. Yeah. It's a caterer. No, they, they have they have about four or five restaurants uh, where they don't, where, you know, under the, under the under the uh, Westminster Palace. Yeah, and about four bars. Mm. I think it's, I think it's way more than that. Drinking. I think it's way more than that. Um, and, and they're all subsidised. We pay for them. What? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, like I mean, like I think it's really ridiculous, mm. a ridiculously pitiful amount of money, isn't it, for a drink? Or, it's or yes, like it, it's like going back to the nineteen seventies. Uh, their uh, their uh, menus uh, essentially, you know, steak and chips, two pound fifty. It's just, I, 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 and that's not much of an exaggeration. It's it's about that. Yeah, but it's like it's, I, I I know somebody who did some you know PR work for some of those uh, well clowns, mm -hmm. and um, he he told me it was a bit he actually he actually got invited there you know to uh, to 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 the you know wherever they in Westminster and uh, he told me that they were um, it was a bit like a cross between Hogwarts and uh, yes Prime Minister. That's what he kind of described it as. Yes. Pretty uh, well, definitive, wouldn't you say? Uh, well, when I went there, it was a bit like um, a cross between uh, Hogwarts and a, um, a, a, a Soho clip joint. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, the Soho clip joint. Yeah, anybody. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, though, Rob... A lot of, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, wildly drunken old men being propped up by suspiciously young things. I thought, what on earth is going on here? Uh, the, and more drunkenness than I've ever seen outside of a student union bar. In fact, including a student union bar. Um, but, uh, perhaps outside Rag Week, I've never seen so much drunkenness in my life. I mean, people were bouncing off walls, literally being held up by um, three or four of their uh, most glamorous assistants. Uh, so it'd be safe to say then that, the, you know, it's a bit of a time warp, really, isn't it? Uh, it's, uh, they're, they're a law unto themselves, uh, Leonard, and uh, there's no doubt about that. OK, well, it's, it sounds like you, you're uh, suspiciously connected uh, to all of this. And we're, I am we're, we're, we no, are going never. to we're going to uh, I speak for myself, Nick, we are going to like look you. into you up and down. Don't you worry about that. Be a knock on your door uh, coming shortly. You're on the list, Leonard. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. What's he got to be depressed about? Chris texts, the one thing the Tories did for me was to show that it does not matter the colour of your skin or where you come from or where you went to school, you can still be a massive racist. Equal opportunities, says Chris. <laughs> yeah, they don't mind where you come from, Chris, as long as you've got a lot of money. Huge. Harrow, Bob, hello. Hi, Nicholas. Yes, Nikki. Bob. Good evening. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the Palace of Westminster, or POW, the House of Commons, is just one big circus 
on one side we've got clunky clown Keir, and then on another side we've got titchy Spooncrack. And in the middle, we can just have a massive giant cannon, and we can put Diane Abbott in the cannon, shoot her out of the cannon into Jeremy Corbyn's open embrace. Okay, well, it sounds like you're giving it a lot of thought, Bob. I have absolutely no idea what you're on about. Sue texts, I wonder who decides who is on the independent parliamentary board. Oh, yes, Parliament does. <laughs> I would expect, um, and um, I'm willing to be uh, proven wrong, but uh, if they are not all of a, uh, of a type, I'd be stunned. Chums, I bet, each and every one of them. It's the same as um, th those, those boards that d decide a chief executive's pay. They all sit on each other's boards. The remuneration committees, they all sit on each other's committees and they say, wow, um, yes, of course this person is worth uh, five million pounds a year and uh, the, uh, the bonus for just showing up uh, for a couple of days a week will be you know, double uh, his or her, <laughs> mostly his salary, and uh, naturally, he'll be uh, requiring a chauffeur and uh, private health insurance and, uh, you know, a free house and uh, <laughs> the, the moon in the sky and, uh, you know, all of the above and uh, everything you can possibly think of. Because when the remuneration committee meets for their own pay, they can just say, well, this bloke over the road there, he just got five million quid and all of the above. And so they just, um, they just award each other massive amounts of uh, money and, and claim that the, uh, the remuneration committees are independent. Yeah, sure they are. Sue Tex, I wonder who decided... Oh, no, I've read that already. Tom says, I seem to recall that during the Tories' austerity programme, we were told to accept below inflation pay rises because we could not afford any more. And we know that NHS workers have received below inflation pay rises for several years now, culminating in the strikes and the claim for a 35% pay increase to rectify their shrinking pay situation. But the MPs, dot, 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 exclamation mark, says Tom. Yeah. Uh, please don't um, judge them by the same standards that they judge us. Bath. Hello, John. Hello, Mr. Abbott. Um... I've got a couple of points. One of them is less salient or less, uh, you know, it's apropos of nothing. The yeah. first one... A couple, uh, couple of three yeah. points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, yeah. But the um, first one is this. I mean, um, I've mentioned this before. My wife is a teacher. She's, te she's taught in quite a few schools and dedicated herself to that. And what happens with that is you get Ofsted and you get Ofsted behaving as a blunt tool, uh, giving one word categorizations for... Yeah had a performance, mm -hmm. which in turn will create lack of morale and uh, so they're, they're used as a whipping boy. Yes. What I don't understand is why don't we have a similar thing for MPs where we categorise their performance? Well, well they, would, they would say out. that. We do. Every five years we get to categorise their performance. We do, but but it, like, only, like in a, only in a certain way. Because if they are representing a, a constituency which always votes a certain way, then it doesn't matter how catastrophically awful they are, they're going to they're gonna retain their job. Isn't that well, right, Liz? Absolutely. Yes. Um, I mean, Nick, is very true, but I'd, li I'd like to see a, a, you know, an MP like, stand up and defend being perfunctory or being, um, you know, substandard, or being, you know, uh, excellent, if he is excellent, or if she's excellent, mm -hmm. sexist, whichever. Um, I'd like that, because, if, you know, source for the goose is source for the gander, but, they, you know, that would then, you know, encourage us, if they get a pay rise, mm. for us to actually say, well, that, you know, they performed well, um, so therefore they get it. And like the fellow the other day who said, I have to have a house in London because I have to get to work at night in the morning. Um, you know, like the rest of us don't. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're dealing with kind of like a, a you know big box of frogs there. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm just uh, still thinking about um, the sauce with the gander. What kind of sauce do you serve with your gander? Well, uh, blueberry and plum. Mmm, that sounds yummy. I'll have mine medium done, please. My, sec my second point is this. Yes. This is like, you know, you can cut me off. I'm trying to sail close to the wind, but not... But I was uh, I was sitting in one of my local watering holes this afternoon. Yeah, minding your uh, own affairs. Sharing a pew with a few other people, and I overheard somebody, and he was like, I know him vaguely. And he was saying that um, 
uh, he accidentally zipped himself up uh, in his gentleman area with his fly, right? And he said, um, spat my drink out, because he was like, surely you'd pull down. Well, you'd think so, yeah. The people, I mean, you, the people you hang out with, John, and I'm certainly am glad that you, uh, you, you jump, did you jump that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you just got dumped there, John. I would have let that go myself because it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't particularly awful. But we, uh, you know, we we have um, uh, certain uh, standards that are being upheld, not by me, but by my glamorous assistant through the glass, who's a very, very sensitive person. And you just uh, stepped over the line there, John. So a little bit too close to the wind. Whatever that means. John Tex enjoyed watching Clue Klux Klanderson. <laughs> Clue, Clue Klux Klanderson getting a tongue lashing from a constituent during his open top bus tour of Asheville. No one was sniggling then. Sniggling? What's sniggling? And I think Clue Klux Clanderson is, it might be amusing, but is uh, probably not very accurate. But what is accurate, as far as the pictures that I saw, was that he um, went on an open top bus tour of a place which would, uh, he would count as, um, in which he is the most popular. And no one, no one showed up. <laughs> no one showed up. I mean, if you're going to get rent a bus and you're going to... I mean, assuming that the bus was rented and he just didn't take the number 19 to the bus station, that they rented a bus, an open-top bus, that they rented in order to go on a victory parade of their, uh, of their local manor. I mean, you're going to require, other, uh, b b uh, lest you look ridiculous, a crowd to show up. I mean, I'd say... A hundred people minimum. They're going to have to be more than one deep along the pavement for at least a hundred yards, aren't they? I mean, what we think of when we think of an open top bus is the celebration for winning the FA Cup or something like that, when uh, you uh, well, you can't see the, uh, the the concrete for people. Thronging they are, and delirium is in the air. But um, the, no, one sh <laughs> no one showed up. And it seemed like a perfectly pleasant day. It wasn't, wasn't lashing down with rain. It wasn't, there wasn't snow up to your eyeballs. It wasn't freezing cold. A chill wind was not coming in from the Antarctic or the Arctic, whichever one it is. It's the Arctic, isn't it? Yeah, I believe it's the Arctic. <coughs> Educational, this show, no? No. Not really. But, a, um, you know, the weather was pleasant. It was clement. So he had everything going for him. You know, what with him being uh, so popular and all. Mr. Red Wall. Mr. Uh, everybody I know uh, thinks this way. <laughs> Mr. Uh, I say what I like and I like what I blooming well say. You know, that bloke. So he rent they rented a bus to do a victory parade through his local manor and no one came. Wow. I think that's called being brought uh, back down to earth. A little dose of reality there. Because once you get out of your uh, echo chamber, where you stop staring at social blooming media all day long, then uh, you might realise that everybody does not agree with you. But that's the evil thing with social media, that it does make you think that absolutely everybody thinks the way you do. Because it only gives you people that think the way you do. You click on something and you're going to get a lot more of it, over and over and over again. That is the evil ways the, uh, of the uh, social media barons. It's uh, addictive, not by accident, on purpose. And that's why people like um, uh, Donald Trump can uh, arrive. Because his, his fans, his cult fans, because they certainly have joined a cult, they believe that everyone thinks that way. That no one thinks any different. Because they have never been introduced to anybody who thinks any different. All they get all day long is how fantastic Donald Trump is. Uh, what's he calling himself now? Honest Don. Honest Don. <laughs> 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 One of the most uh, crooked people that ever walked the earth is now getting away with calling himself Honest Don. Wow. And I think it, it could get a lot worse and probably will get a lot worse than Donald Trump. I mean, he could be the best of what is uh, to come. I mean, it could get a lot worse from him on. 
because this social media thing is not going to go away. It's not going to get any better. I mean, they can ban TikTok in America if, if they want, but it's just going to be replaced by something else. I mean, the kids aren't going to stop um, doing the disco dancing for uh, likes. Are they? Something else will come up. They'll just get replaced. They'll just call it something else, but it'll be the same blooming thing. And it'll be the same people that are organising the ago rhythms. Because, I mean, there's uh, no doubt a, a limited number of people that can do that to that uh, extent. And so they'll just uh, employ the same people to go and uh, set up another uh, we uh, website. They could call it Talk Tech. <laughs> and it will do the exact same thing, just like Facebook does, and just like Twitter does. And I don't really know anything about Instagram. I've posted some pictures on it, but I don't I interact with it in any way, shape or form. After the first time that I looked at it, and I thought, this is, without doubt, the most addictive thing I have ever seen in my life. And it took me about 10 seconds to realise this. Because I flipped, I, I, I signed up for it, and then um, I just flipped through what was the, the first thing that came up. And it was, um, you know, how to tie shoelaces in funny and interesting ways. And um, how to uh, cook uh, eggs. And um, here's a cute thing of a, a, a puppy dog on a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> And I mean, in about 10 seconds, literally 10 seconds, I thought, this is, I'm going to put this down right now, otherwise there goes the rest of my life. And that's what they do. They hook you in with all this uh, cute stuff and, and know whatever you click on is what you think. And so they just give you a lot more of what you think in order to keep your eyes on it. Because if it's free, you are the product. And they just want to, um, they just want to monetize you. And, uh, and by that um, method, they have brought up uh, Honest Don. I'm a person that wants to tell the truth. I'm an honest person. He lied. And it is quite possible that in the in not too distant future, people will look back at Donald Trump and uh, say, God, you know, pff, the stuff that we got on uh, today, um, if, if only we could go back to Honest Don. <laughs> <clears throat> and it's all thanks to those uh, those uh, geeky tech nerds. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. We don't appreciate it. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Hot. Uh, hey, Chorty AIR. <laughs> Greg says, forget rats. This is in a relation to what we were talking about last night. If you didn't hear uh, last night's show and you wish to, then can I recommend that you check out the podcast? We do a podcast of Friday and Saturday night's shows, and the idea is that we take the news and most of the ads out, mostly, which means it takes less time to listen to, you'll use less electricity, and with the money you save, you'll be able to bung the uh, Tories a uh, couple of uh, ten million pounds. Because they are in want of it. And they'll be very, very grateful. <laughs> You. In ways that you couldn't possibly imagine. <laughs> It'd be the best investment you ever make. Greg says, forget rats. How about the... Uh, it's on Global Player, by the way. I should have mentioned that. It's exclusive to Global Player. If you've got one of them stupid smart speakers, the magic phrase is, play Nick Abbott, the whole show podcast. The Friday and Saturday night shows always get put up the internet as a podcast. Nick Abbott, the whole show podcast. Appreciate it. Greg says, forget rats, how about the island of Marion that is infested with mice that are now feasting on seabirds? How big are these mice? Seabird? Well, what kind of seabirds? And I don't know how big they are. I've never heard of Marion. You're the expert, Greg. You tell me. It's like those, um, those newspaper headlines that are questions. God, I cannot stand those. It's like... Is this the, the best restaurant in the world? I don't know. You're the blooming journalist. <laughs> what are you asking me for? <laughs> Harrogate, Shelby. Hello, Nikki. You all right? Yes, Shelby. Uh, why did you not try my scumpy fries? Um, it sounds like you're uh, talking with uh, your head in a bucket. Are you speaking to me with your head in a bucket? I was on speaky. It took so long to answer me. I was holding. Oh, the I see. Now. Yeah, not that you're complaining or anything. <laughs> whinging and whining no, no, and moaning. Yeah, this is a terrible, terrible line. <laughs> is it okay now? No, it isn't. There's just something wrong with it. Either you're a fumbling. Stop, stop fumbling with your phone, woman. I moved it. 
Yeah. Right. I ain't. Okay. All right. It's Carry on. Then. You now. Well, I don't. I don't know what kind of phone you're uh, using there, uh, Shelby, but I think you should replace it straight away. A rubbish one, obviously. Yeah. What's your question? <laughs> Oh, because there's, uh, I mean, that doesn't look like uh, something that a human being should be eating. Well, I got them quite cheap. You told me they were seven quid a bag, and I got them from the shop for a pound for the old pack, so I think you're trying to make money out on that. Right. Okay. Well, um, uh, thanks, but no thanks. Appreciate it, Shelby. That, that, that phone is just, <laughs> it's just awful. How is it? I mean, I bet there's nothing wrong with the phone. It's just the infrastructure in this country. How is it that I can take a call from Japan? which is so many miles away that, well, there's actually no way of knowing how far away Japan is. If only there was, then we would really be getting somewhere, but there isn't, sadly. It's a very, very long way away. How can I speak to somebody in Japan, or, or the west side of America, for instance? I know how far that is, 6,000 miles. And they'll come through clear as a bell. And yet I speak to somebody just down the road and I can't understand a word they're saying. How is that? Charles says, why is it okay for one man to donate £15 million to the Tories and get £500 million with the contracts, but it's not okay for Labour to accept donations from unions funded by hundreds of thousands of workers? Not union barons, workers. The most corrupt government in living memory, says Charles. Well, you get no argument from me. <laughs> yeah, they, they do say that all the time, don't they? The, the Tories, oh, well, you can't trust Labour because they, uh, they accept, uh, they, you know, they're in the pockets of the unions. Yeah. As Charles says, and I pointed this out last night, the obvious is that the unions are representing millions of people. So millions of people are giving the Labour Party small amounts of money in the interests of those millions of people. Now contrast that with the Conservative Party, who are getting millions of pounds from a few people. Now, do we believe that uh, millionaires and billionaires are so generous with their money that they just gift vast amounts to political parties and want nothing in return? Well, I'm sure that some of them do. I'm sure that some of them are absolutely lovely people in every way, shape and form. But not all of them, I bet. I bet some of them, at least, want something in return for the millions of pounds that they give. I mean, I would, wouldn't you? 0345 Uh Woolwich. Hello, Richard. Oh, hi, Nick. Yes, sir. Hi. Um, by the way, the, that rat call yesterday, yeah. the guy with the pet rats, uh -huh. is the most funniest, funniest thing radio I'd, I'd heard for a long time. I was just, I was crying with laughter with it, so, oh. um, um, yeah. I don't really recall very much about it. Maybe I should listen to this show once in a while. You should listen. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what, but what I wanted to talk about was you know, these allowances. You know, what, was it, what, well, the, the basic salary of MPs, I think, is probably too low, if I'm honest. What? I, I would... Yeah, I think it's too low. I think it should be. I think they should raise the basic salary, but the allowances, the kind of you know a, a quarter of a million pounds, yes. mm -hmm. I I think that's obscene, and I think what they should do is what business did sort of fifteen twenty years ago, which is essentially strip this concept of allowances, get rid of it. Go with base salary and then go to sort of sort of actual, act, you know, their actual expenses. Right, so raise the salary, drop the expenses, yeah. and, uh, right, okay. So, so then it would become more um, transparent. The amount of money that they actually earn would become clearer to the general public because I'm sure that they don't include the expenses in the amount that the, the, the public assumes that MPs earn but of course it does it does add exactly. up and and the law is now such that they can't employ their own wives husbands girlfriends and boyfriends as researchers but but if you were em employing a said person before the law changed then you can still do it and so uh, uh, they do in vast amounts employ the person that they're related to supposedly yeah. as their uh, as their secretary which seems like a, a pretty neat racket if you can pull it off. Yeah, um, and so here's my thing. What I would do is, um, very quickly, I can hear your music. So what I would do is I would get rid of Charles from Buckingham Palace, 
I'd make Buck House, which has 725 rooms, mm. into a MP hub. I would, and then I would have central administrators to, to kind of yeah. service service them. And then uh, seal the doors closed. <laughs> <laughs> and leave them to it. Yeah, and, and Lord of the Rings would ensue. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Richard. Excellent idea. 0345 6060 973. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello, boys. What number are you calling from? 0345 6060 973. Tom texts, Henry Ford understood this decades ago. If his workers did not earn enough to buy his cars, who would be his market? You can't profit off a consumer economy when everyone is skint. Capitalism is eating itself, says Tom. Well, uh, yes. But what we have here now is not really capitalism. We're not really selling anything to anybody in this country. I mean, Germany makes things. That's why the wealth is more spread out in Germany. But we don't really make things here. What we do for a living is a few number of people sit in airless offices and move numbers about in a screen. They buy companies, then strip them of their value, fire everybody that they can, and then borrow against the assets of that company, pay themselves the money they've borrowed, and then let the company go bust. That's what we do in this country now. It's not really capitalism. We're not selling anything to anybody, so they don't really um, have to be concerned about whether the, uh, the, the people, the workers, can afford to buy their stuff, because they ain't selling anything. They're just taking. They're not making profit. They're taking it from many people and giving it to a few. That's what we do here now. So what Henry Ford uh, did or did not know do is irrelevant to uh, us, particularly in this country, because that's not the kind of capitalism we're running here. It's more like a kleptocracy. It's trickle up economics from the many to the few. Because if many, many people have a hundred pounds, then what are they going to do with that? I mean, they're probably going to, uh, you know, buy some food or uh, something uh, mundane and boring like that. But if you took £100 from many people and gave it to one person, then suddenly they are in the money, honey. And they can go do something exciting with it, like buy a yacht or an island. Better for them. That's what they think. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's, uh, what, it's uh, we ain't living in that kind of world no more. Not here, anyway. They are in Germany. That's why uh, people in Germany are H-A-P-P-Y. Because the wealth is spread about. It's not concentrated all in, the, uh, in, a, in a square mile of the capital city. It's uh, here, there and everywhere, baby, in Germany. So when people say, uh, oh, you know, look at Germany, they're in the doldrums. Yeah, but they, they may be uh, relative to where they used to be, but they're certainly better than where we are. And they're, um, and they're not as poor as we are. Because you get outside London... And uh, you know, or uh, the southeast in general, you know, Surrey and uh, London, and uh, the rest of the country ain't got no money. That's why people are hurting. That's why they're sort of flailing around looking for somebody to blame, other than the people that they keep voting for. Because <laughs> because if they blame the people that they're voting for, then uh, you know, more fool them. It um, it uh, you know creates a certain dissonance in the mind. I keep voting for these people, but they keep screwing me over. Yeah, well, perhaps do something else or blame a, an identifiable minority. And that's where we are at the moment. That's the sort of, uh, yeah, that's where we are on the, uh, and the, this, the conveyor belt of blame. They haven't come around to blaming themselves for keeping on voting for the same people over and over that keep uh, screwing them. But, uh, you know, they're, so they've, they've decided to uh, level the blame at uh, you know, a small identifiable minority. And that's where we are now. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I get what you're saying, Tom, about Henry Ford, who understood decades ago that if his workers didn't earn enough to buy his cars, then uh, who would be his market? But that's not what we do here. 
We ain't selling nothing. We're just, we're just taking. Or, or a very few of us are, and that's where all the money is. I mean, we say that we're the richest, the sixth richest economy in the world. Well, okay, great. Go to Hull and tell people that. Tarek texts, when Tichy Suitsize stands up to answer a question in Parliament, the Labour, SNP and Independent MPs should start singing Abba's song, Money, 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 must be funny in a Titchman's world. Oh, a listener with material. Oh, no. Excruciating. <laughs> Bristol. Hello, Maz. Hello. Yes, sir. Right. I wanted to uh, talk about this, uh, Dan, about affairs. Uh, how come all these things had not come out for last five years? So my uh, personal opinion is that Bodgers and his uh, cronies, they sat on it until somebody they don't like to uh, bring it out. So I think the fishy is getting it. So that's why they bring it out now. What do you think? You think subterfuge that um, Bodger is um, acting in a way that um, might uh, uh, grease his route back to the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, 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 where do we... Is that what you think? Yeah. Right. This is my personal opinion. What do you think? Um, I think I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> Doesn't mean to say that I, I think he's done it, but I wouldn't put it past him. The five years, they didn't do it. So this is the revenge on Fishy. Right. Okay. And, and, yeah, and another thing, how come Ranjit uh, haven't had him for a while? Uh, well, you'll have to ask him that. I'll pass your uh, number on and he can uh, call you personally. All right. Thanks a lot, Maz. He's just checking up on, uh, you know, a regular. Don't encourage him, Maz. Rose texts. Not wait, not raining in West Devon. When did I ever say that? I have never said it was not raining in West Devon. I mean, that's very, very specific. West Devon. I mean, why would I say that? Anyway, it says not raining in West Devon. Rubbish. I sloshed into a shop late on and was told that every conversation had been about the rain. All day, every customer. It's the tipping point. We've had enough. One chap said that when he first moved here, a neighbour greeted him with, I'd have rung a neighbour greeted him with, and I'd have rung in to say this if I could do the accent, fearfully inclement weather down here, and so it proved. Glasgow may get some downpours, but in West Devon when it rains, it never stops for weeks on end, says uh, Rose, who I believe is uh, complaining. Stop whining. <laughs> and um, let's have, uh, let me see now. Erith, Steve. Uh, good evening, Nick. Hello, Steve. Uh, I just, I just, um, because I heard that fella about the rats, so I thought uh, uh, um, this might be interesting for him. The British Army have, or had, I don't know if it's still there, they had a giant African rat in their service for clearing landmines. And oh. it got a medal and awards and everything. How silly is that? A medal? No, that's it's a true. rat. It's because, yeah, because, because, like I said about dogs, you can train them rats. Uh, uh, yeah, honestly. Right. But, yeah, but a medal, though, the rat doesn't know what it's doing. If it did, it wouldn't do it. No, but they do silly things like that, don't they? What, rats? No, I mean, they're, they're people. Oh, people. <laughs> people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, rats, much smarter than people, probably, but yeah. You, yeah, yeah well, well, come a, a uh, global thermonuclear war, my money's on the rats surviving, not us. Well, yeah, they would. Yeah. Yeah. They are they're very, very intelligent, and they do, they make better pets than, you oh. said, like a hamster. Uh, how can you make a rat a pet? It's a rat. Yeah, but they, because they're, they are inquisitive and sociable, and... Right. Well, yeah, yeah, you you I lost me. Ago, like, hang on a minute. Wait, wait. Uh, you lost me at inquisitive. I don't want an inquisitive pet. I want a pet that just does what it's told. Oh, they, no, they, they, they don't really do that. No. <laughs> But you're no. talking as though from experience. You have a pet rat. Yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't now. But I've 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 kept him in the past. Oh, and you lost recently it recently. And yeah, I <laughs> the ones that I had recently, I, I never ever locked their cage ever, even when I went out. But why? Why choose a rat? Like I say, it's, it's no different to choosing a dog. No, it is. A dog is a dog, and a rat is a rat. I think you'll find that that is accurate. <laughs> Yeah, but they—they they are. Um, oh, I suppose it's just just 
I mean, do you ever put, you ever put a lead on it, take it for a walk? No, but, but, but one I had about 20 years ago, I, I used to put him on my shoulder and take him when I went out down the shop. Right, and um, <laughs> I can imagine the reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. Do they have, um, you know, like Crufts? Do they have rat shows? They actually do, yes. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not joking, because um, no, they're they don't. fancy rats. No, they don't. Um, they do not they have... Do Look it up, Nick. They're I certainly rats. will do nothing of the sort. <laughs> they, they, they do, and they, some of them can be quite expensive as well. How much? I, I wouldn't know about that, but... Um, so my, my, my not... Were rescue rats, and uh, <laughs> the one that I had twenty years ago was um, rescue in the pet rats, shop and they was going to feed it to the snake because because it was a runt, and right. So I, I I said, if I offer you some money, can I take it? Right, and I gave him a fiver for that one. They should have given you a fiver. Well, he should have really, but he he, he was going he was going to give it to his snakes. Don't they um, smell a bit? Um, yes. No more than I do. <laughs> no more than I do. <laughs> All right, good one, Steve. Thanks for that. Uh, you've uh, alarmed me enough. Okay, here are the uh, full details. A club is hot. When is this from? This is uh, 2012. Not long enough ago. A club is holding a Crufts style contest for rats in a Derbyshire village. What? Lisa Harries from the Midlands Rat Club said specimens from across the UK had been entered into the contest at a village hall in Willington, which has now been condemned. She said the rats were judged on a number of categories, including appearance, colour and friendliness. To fr <laughs> friendliness? Anybody want to co cosy up to a rat? No. She said the show is basically a miniature crufts. Yeah, except that it isn't. The rats are judged on what they look like, friendliness, their colours and markings, because there are hundreds of different varieties, Ms. Harris said. The judges place them in positions accordingly. The main award is the best in show winner. And there's a picture of the best in show. And you know what it looks like? A rat! She says they're very intelligent. Is she talking about the owners or the rats? A lot of people think they're wild, disgusting, and carry diseases, but they're actually miniature cats and dogs. No. <laughs> no, they really aren't. I hate to break the news to you, uh, Lisa Harris from the Midlands Rat Club, but uh, they really aren't like miniature cats and dogs. You know, what, uh, you know what miniature cats and dogs are like? Miniature cats and dogs, not rats. Any more than a cat is a miniature horse. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. What in places goes on inside that head of yours? 0345 6060 973. Andy texts, I'm a 68-year-old left-wing woke pro-EU surrender monkey who absolutely loves your show. However, I have a problem. Since becoming a regular listener a few months ago, I've been infected by your Johnson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we... What can I do to get this uh, big, fat, greedy nincompoop out of my head? The great, big, greedy nincompoop. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, Andy. Am I, am I helping yet? No. Oliver says, instead of giving our MPs a pay rise, how about we all stand on our doorsteps and clap for them every Thursday night? <laughs> Yeah, that, that went around on uh, social media today, and I retweeted that. Why don't we just give them a clap instead? Good idea. That will teach them. Let's see now. Who's been uh, waiting the longest? Pimlico. Hello, Penny. It's Pimlico Penny. Hi there. Hello I, there. I did have a, yeah, I did have a pet rat for a while because Ugh. I did a, an experiment at university and at the end of it, which I got an A plus for, yeah. I either had to kill or keep the rat. And? Um, and? and it grew grew bigger than my poodle. But anyway, that's not why I'm ringing you. <laughs> I, I, I'm ringing you about another rat. Right, now, wait a minute, back up. What kind of experiment yeah. were you um, engaging in at uni with well, this rat? Well, it was a psychology degree in behavioural psychology of animals yeah and it, it had to do something for me which i had to teach it and it did it beautifully what like, um, like play the piano something like that well not quite as creative as that was but it was it door, doing turn. the marimba <laughs> <laughs> not really 
he didn't. Well, he was later in life, but for my experiment, he has to turn left or right. Oh, is that but, it? Yeah, that was it. But he got me an A plus. And, well, um, they're just giving them away, aren't they? Anology. He, anyone could get anology. Well, except he went on to live for three years and and was um, got bigger and bigger. And my poodle took sort of second stage after he got bigger than my poodle. Right. Um, and just to be clear, we're talking about the poodle is your dog. Correct. Right. But. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But there is another rat on the scene that I really rang up to talk oh, about. Oh, right. Yes, and that's Frank Hester. Oh, that rat. That rat. And I just wanted to tell you a few facts about it, because mm -hmm. I happened to work in the industry where he made his uh, fortune. Which was, remind us? Um, Phoenix Pharmaceuticals, which is a software company that provides software for the NHS, which is basically all the information that they get about your health and share with records across GPs, hospitals, etc. Right. And he started that in about 2005 when I was quite a senior civil servant. And he, um, he tried to monopolise the market, which he's done very, very successfully. And he is the sole director and sole um, shareholder of pharmaceuticals Com sorry, Phoenix Pharmaceuticals, and he has made millions out of public service contracts. And the fact that he is now giving millions back to the Conservative Party, who have been awarding him these contracts mm. for his software, coincidental is. Uh, I, I'm not sure it's coincidental. A complete coincidence. It, it just it's one of those coincidences that happens over and over again. It's uh, it's it's remarkable, really. All <laughs> all you have to do is uh, is um, get a, a massive contract from Her Majesty, His Majesty's government, and um, co quite coincidentally, I'm sure they were going to do it anyway. That uh, some of that money goes back to the Conservative Party. Well, it's, it really um, does. It does, and Jeremy Hunt in his Chancellor's speech has now allocated another three point something billion mm. for the NHS IT, which of course this company could benefit hugely because they have quite a big monopoly in the market because the, the whole thing of being a, a system that works across the NHS is that they talk to each other. But he, he, he you know, System 1 has had its faults, it's lost data, it's you know, lost information about patients. But he stands to gain many, many more contracts and to make millions. And if, if it, you know, he's made millions and now he's giving it back to the Conservative Party who have been funding him. Yeah, but it's just a coincidence, of course. That, that, Do you think that so? is the, um, Absolutely, that is the case. Just a coincidence. It's just one of those things that just uh, coincidentally happens over and over again. Do you think so? Do you ten billion million pounds to a party that's awarding contracts? Yeah, coincidentally. Yeah. Do you think so? <laughs> Are you having a having a go? <laughs> having a joke. <laughs> Am I having a laugh? Who, me? I, 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 think, I think my my rat is probably more intelligent than you if you are having a laugh. Right, well, I would I would always turn right, Penny. Your rat turns left, and that's just a matter for it. I would turn right, because that is the correct way to turn. All right, thanks yeah. a lot, Penny. Penny's got an ology. Uh, this says, uh, as interesting as the PPE... Is this a message from you? Yes, I want... Uh, this, as interesting as the PPE stuff is, how did she get a rat to grow to be bigger than a dog? Well, I guess we'll never know. Well, she still... No, she disappeared. We'll never know. It's a mystery. Here, Penny. How did you get it's your rat to grow bigger than your dog? Uh, it's called TPP. It's not PPE. But um, basically, rats grow until they die. So they just keep growing. They're exoskeletons keep growing so my little poodle was you know reached a size at a certain point your rat, rat growing. had an yep. exoskeleton what is it like a terminator no. affirmative <laughs> an exoskeleton <laughs> your rat well, well it just kept the skeleton its bones kept growing whereas my poodle stopped at a certain right. stage your poodle's exoskeleton stopped and the rat's uh, exoskeleton just continued to grow Correct. I, under I understand Correct. Some sort I'm of so uh, some so some some so sort of freaky it. science experiment you got going on over there, Penny. She's got a rat with an exoskeleton. Can you believe that? No. <laughs> is it is it made of um, uh, polymetal alloy? Affirmative. Yeah, something like that. 
0345 6060 973. Uh, Graham says, apparently Penny Morden said the stuff in the papers today about the possibility of her replacing the MP is nonsense. She told Sky News, the public are rather tired of these stories. I think she meant to say that the public are rather <laughs> tired of these Tories. Voters have had enough. Yes, enough. Voters are had enough. O of what? Pompous politicians have been running this country for too long. I, I couldn't agree more. I know that might sound shocking, but I agree with Jacob Reese smug What? Yeah. Voters have had enough. <laughs> How can you be so unself-aware as to say... Voters have had enough. Pompous politicians have been running this country for too long. He's accusing others of being pompous. How can you be that, self, uh, that unself-aware? It's just extraordinary. Voters have had enough of pompous politicians who have been running this country for too long. <laughs> Said Smug. Good grief. Is this real life or am I hallucinating? Get that woman with the ology back on because I, I think I'm going to need some uh, serious therapy. Simon says, Italy was run by the Mafia. Now we have the Toffia. Wales has the, ta has the Taffia. Absolutely. <laughs> Offensive. Dave says, I've just returned home from a Santana tribute band called Very Santana. Rock and roll! Very Santana. I don't get it. Is that supposed to be a joke? Very Santana? Am I missing something? He says they were very good, but they performed the hits in chronological order. Working on the principle that, you're, that you save your best songs to the end of the gig, they should have performed them in reverse order. Ending with Soul Sacrifice would have been better than Smooth, or is it just me, says Dave. No, Dave, it's not just you. They should have uh, saved the best songs to the end of the gig. Very Santana. I don't get it. Chris says, it's a shame that uh, they're, they're spelt wrong. I mean, I, I don't wish to be pedantic, but it just winds me up uh, enormously when people spell they're wrong. Chris says, it's a shame. It, 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 he doesn't actually. I'll just read it as it's written. It's I shame there isn't a village near to the village of Thwing called Thong. They could get... <laughs> they could get together and have a Thwing Thong together. <laughs> Good work there, Chris. <laughs> 0345 6060 973. Oldbury, hello, Ranchers. Hi, Nick. You're right. Yes, sir. Good, thanks. I've noticed that everybody's been calling you Nicky and you haven't taken the bait. Yeah, it's you getting know. old. Oh, yeah, yeah, I ain't no Nicky. <laughs> not now, not ever, <laughs> never. Oh, yeah. I've got to say hello to a number one fan of yours who come to see me in the shop today. Oh, yeah. His name's Paddy. Now, he came all the way from Coventry to see me. Yeah. And what, what did he, he buy? He had roll chips and a sausage. Row? Uh, roll, yeah. That's what's what's row? You probably don't have it down south. It's um, um, like fish eggs. Oh, oh, row, yeah. row. Fish roll, eggs roll, on... Roll, yeah. Fish yeah. eggs on chips. Yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> he says he loves. He says he loves the banter that you give everybody. Right, he says, uh, goes, hey, hello, so hello, Paddy. I've never right. heard of that in my life. Row yeah. like, fish eggs on chips. Why would you spoil a perfectly good chip by putting uh, by by squirting okay. some? Um, have, you, have you ever seen? Have you, uh. have you seen like spam? Yeah, fish eggs are like that. It's uh, it comes from Denmark. Very expensive now. Can I it's can like I just a, say a, for for uh, the avoidance of doubt, fish eggs are not like spam. No, they're processed. I don't know what they are. They, anyway, listen, <laughs> we're digressing. Okay. <laughs> Nick, you know this prospect of an early uh, election, yeah? Yes. Okay, we need your expert opinion on mm -hmm. this. If Pe Penny Morden does, because what they, what they need to do now to save damage limitations, they need to revamp that party now, yeah? The yeah, well, the best yeah? of luck with that, yeah. Well, yeah, so Boris ain't coming back because he's not an MP unless they make him a lord somewhere. Well, they could drop him into, into one of their vanishingly few safe seats. 
Yeah, but that's going to be at the general election, any or if they have a by election somewhere. Yeah, a by election. Right, that, yeah. Only yeah. Right, so, but the Rishi Sunak isn't going to do that because that's going to go against him. Yeah. Well, he, he might not have any control over it. I mean, well, the, the, a local MP who uh, is uh, in uh, uh, Boris's pocket might say, OK, well, I'm going to skip away now. You make me a yeah. lord when you become uh, prime minister. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, and it's a done deal. There's no corruption in British politics, is there? There's none whatsoever, mate. They can't do that. Zero. Okay, so, yeah. so, you know, when they're saying he's only got so many days right, mm -hmm. to call a, an election in May, yeah. but then he can call it in um, June, can't he? Or in the summer, restate if he wants to. I will restate my case. I th would not be surprised if they cancelled the forthcoming election for our safety. Mm. Yeah, but no, the, the safety part now, I think it's not going to happen because the war in Ukraine is kind of calming down the, or, be, or whichever way it's going. Well, it, it don't make no never mind. It doesn't have to be true. I mean, I w I'm expecting it not to be true, but, but uh, one way or the other, uh, vans will be coming around a street near you on polling day saying... Emergency, everybody to get from street. Emergency... Everybody to get from street. And I'm really uh, upset to hear about that whole um, fish eggs uh, scenario no, because that, is... that is just, uh, ugh, I'm, yeah. I, 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 Please, I, just, I, I was almost as sick in my own mouth, which is worse than being sick in somebody else's mouth. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> it, Ranji, I've got to go because I'm past the news. But thanks for that, 0345. Thanks for that <laughs> appalling call. Uh Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. What we got here is a failure to communicate. Mary says, I love the way they say install a new leader as if it was a washing machine. Kay says, been a fan of yours since 2002 on your real radio days. I was your first ever caller on that show when you were up here in Scotland land, says Kay. Uh, appreciate it, Kay. Thank you. Albert says, I say cut off all the heating and close the restaurants and bars when MPs are in there and then they might realise what the rest of us are feeling like. Good idea, Albert. And Sue says, uh, have you noticed that Penny Morbid never smiles? <laughs> no, I, had, I hadn't actually noticed that, but, you know, I've been trying to avoid her. With great success up to this point. Sam Batch, hello, John. Hey. Yes, John. Um, you're on about rats before. Um, Michael Jackson uh, wrote a song about his pet rat. He, um, no, it wasn't a rat. I think it was, um, it was a, what was it? Called Ben. Ben, yeah, it wasn't a rat. It was something else, wasn't it? <laughs> what was it? I'm pretty huh? sure it was a rat. Shamoni. <laughs> Whatever, that, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we've got a place in London that's over over overgrown with um, ridden with rats. Ridden. It's called Parliament. Yeah, that, that is right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to uh, look it up. Michael and, Jack uh, Jackson. Jacks J A C mm, 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 mm. Ben. What was what was it? Let's have a look. Um. The first thing that comes up is Tupac Shakur. What's he got to do with it? <laughs> Google oh, Google is an idiot. What's what's Tupac Shakur got to do with Michael Jackson's rat? <laughs> okay, here's what I'm looking for. Apparently, my glamorous assistant has found it uh, uh, toot sweet. In the Animal Songs canon, Ben may be the only love song about a rat. It is about a rat. He's completely correct in every respect. What's he want to write a I song never, about a rat for? I never Googled that. Right. You just uh, knew that off the top of your own head. Because I don't know how to Google and all that kind right. of stuff. Well, I wouldn't um, bother with any of that. There's nothing on the internet worth looking at. The only thing you've got to say, and, uh, I think this would describe 30 people. Like, um, too small for a cat, too big for a snake. Must be a rat. <laughs> there's 30 people. Like. Right. OK, good work. Thanks a lot, John. Yeah. Cheers, mate. 0345 6060 973. The song was the title track of the sequel to the 1971 movie Willard, in which a young outsider trains a rat population to attack his enemies. Eventually, the rats, led by their leader Ben, turn on Willard and devour him. Well, don't tell us. I've never heard of that before in my life. The, a 1971 movie called Willard. It's a 50-year-old film. Spoilers are fine. No, says uh, the guy next th through the glass. No, no, they're not fine. There's people 
I know this might sound hard to believe, but there's people today who have not seen that rap film. You believe that? No, they haven't seen the rap film, and they uh, haven't seen um, Apocalypse Now. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. And they haven't uh, heard uh, Dark Side of the Moon. Rock and roll! So they don't know how that ends. And they ain't seen uh, The Wizard of Oz, or Bambi, by the way. The m mother gets shot. Oh, I've spoiled it for you now. Let's have um, Epping. Steve. Evening, Nick. How yes, you Steve. Doing? Good, thanks. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks for making yeah. your call. Um, it's just, I'm in a bit of a quandary whether to take the next double gin and tonic or mm -hmm. pay the kids' school fees while Liz Truss is happy to take a pension after 45 days' work. Right, um, I, I'd go, I'd go uh, with a gin if I were you. Booze. You'd go, with, you'd go with the gin? Yes, definitely. But, um, I can, well, I'm, fair, I'm, I'm up for that. But I just, I don't know if you think it's crazy that after 45 days' work, she can take 170k pension and personal protection. She's worth uh, every penny. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. But the other last thing I heard, have you heard the rumour, Quasi Cartang, Love Island? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't heard that rumour, no. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I don't know, is it a rumour or is it true? Well... I thought, you're the man in the know, I thought, that's why I rang up, I thought... Oh, yeah, like... I, the point, uh, you yeah. might know the situation. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, you, leave it with me, Steve, and I'll have a full report on your desk first thing in the morning, all right? Oh, uh, you're a gentleman. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. Drunk off his face. 0345 6060 973. Martin texts, housing projects have been delayed for years because of an infrastructure, infrastructure crisis. Caused by a lack of capacity in the national grid, council leaders have warned. Well, I should have um, not sort of paused halfway through that sentence because it, it makes more sense if you don't. Have you heard, housing projects have been delayed for years because of an infrastructure crisis caused by a lack of capacity in the national grid, council leaders have warned. Building schemes for thousands of homes were on hold while new projects faced delays of up to four years in some parts of the U... <sighs> See, now, four years has got an exclamation mark after it, implying that that's the end of that sentence, but it isn't. In some parts of the UK, because of a lengthening queue of developers waiting to be connected. Th what is this about? Why is he telling me all this? I don't... Sorry, I'm on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interrupting your business. He's placing a bet. Those hoping to build new wind turbine solar farms or micro hydroelectric schemes face even longer waits after a deluge of new connection requests, many of them from speculative schemes, says Martin by text, which has just been cut and pasted. What's that about? Housing projects are being delayed. Yeah? Okay. What are your thoughts on that, Martin, Other outside of what you've read in um, a newspaper? Chris says, in an interview given by 30p Lee on his favourite TV station, he claimed he could not vote against his government's proposal because op oppos opposition MPs were sniggling at me at the voting lobby. <laughs> I bet they were sniggering. I, I think the sniggering is, is more likely what they were doing. Yeah. I uh, snigger just at the very idea of uh, 30p Lee. The angry toilet brush. <laughs> That's not offensive, is it? 0345 6060 Hertfordshire. Hello, Mandy. Hello, Nick. You're Mandy. Yes, don't sing. Fly <laughs> me. Go on. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah. You have freaked me out tonight with the rats. Yeah. I'm well, going to freak you out. You now. and me both. What? Oh, it's horrible. Don't even go there. I have nightmares. Um, <clears throat> do you eat tamasalata? No. Why? Why would you why would you want to do that? Why? Because nobody knows what it is. It's like pink mush. <laughs> it's delicious. I tell, I'll tell you what it is. What is it? Fish eggs. Fish eggs? It's disgusting. Why would you want to eat that? What? Why would you want to eat that? It's delicious. No, it, it just isn't. Don't, don't I can prove I can prove I together. can prove that it is not delicious. What? I, I, it, does your phone work, Mandy? <laughs> Am I speaking loudly enough? I can prove that it does not work. Uh, it does not taste good. Probably lots of people eat it. Do you not want to know how I can prove it? Yeah, go on. You'll freak me out again, won't you? No. 
uh, this is perfectly uh, it's obvious. It, okay. How much of a supermarket shelf does Tarama Salata <laughs> occupy? Almost <laughs> nothing at all. It's got a <laughs> tiny little section next to the uh, the coleslaw. Next to hummus. And um, tatsiki, which I don't buy. Yeah, and that and uh, no one buys that stuff either. It's yogurt. I don't like it. I don't like it. Well, yogurt. yogurt's got two aisles. That's so popular. <laughs> And it's almost impossible to get any yogurt. And it's not flavors. It's almost impossible not to get a yogurt that's uh, or to get a yogurt that is not zero percent fat. That is awful. That stuff. I don't like yeah. yogurt. Do you eat yogurt? Yeah, of course. Why not? Oh, it's horrible. It's not horrible. It's it's verifiably not horrible for the okay. exact same reason that I've given uh, before because it occupies vast stretches of the supermarket aisles. Because it's cheap. No, it's not because it's cheap. It's because people like it. Okay. And they give the lids to their pets to lick. Anybody they, who's got a cat or a dog will give the lid to the pet to lick. I very much doubt that. I'm what? telling you, my friends do. A uh, tarama salata. No, not tarama salata, the yogurt lid. Oh, the yogurt. Well, cats, <laughs> the cats and dogs shouldn't be eating dairy. Why? Maybe not cats, but dogs. But they do eat it. They eat yogurt. Well, they they, like the yeah, but they're stupid, though. You, <laughs> they, they eat things that will kill them. Oh. Like chocolate. You feed a dog chocolate, and it I will eat like as much as I you can like shove chocolate. in its... Uh, I'm can a you, woman. Here, Mandy, can you hear me when I'm speaking? <laughs> 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 Is there something did. wrong with your phone? <laughs> Listen to me. Okay. I just haven't spoken to you for such a long time. I feel like I've got to get it all out. Right, OK. Well, it's, if it's in you, get it out. <laughs> and it sounds like you did. Thanks a lot, Mandy, for that whole uh, Tarama Salata uh, issue, if that is indeed uh, how you say it. Ugh is how I say it. Vile. Why would anybody want to eat that? When there's, uh, you know, like other options are available, like coleslaw, for instance, or, or anything else. I'd prefer nothing would be better. Have you heard? Martin texts, housing projects have been delayed for years because of an infrastructure... Cr and I just uh, lost the will to live. Something about uh, micro-hydroelectric uh, schemes or uh, something like that. Nobody has any idea what he's talking about. But it's probably correct in every respect. I just am um, not that uh, bothered uh, one way or the other. Just as long as they don't uh, build any near where I live. <laughs> but that's, that's what everybody thinks. Oh, yeah, well, we need all of that, but just nowhere near where I live. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. How may I help you? How may I help you? 0345 6060 973. Nick texts, uh, there seems to be a direct correlation between MP salary increases and the substandard quality of the MPs. The more we give them, the worse they get. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's about right. How about you, Liz? Absolutely. Absolutely. She's fully on board. Uh, I have um, uh, details about uh, Liz, uh, Liz Truss's trip. She went on this... Uh, she went gallivanting about. Because she's... <laughs> she's still... <laughs> She appears to be of the opinion that people are interested in what she has to say. Anybody remotely interested in what Liz Truss has to say? No. I don't think so. But she believes that uh, she has not delighted us enough. Well, here's the news. James says, I can't believe that we're getting a new Prime Minister. How many would that be if Miss Moneypenny gets in just to call an election? At least if Labour won, we would not know who our Prime Ministers was day by day. And by the way, if you can guess how many Prime Ministers we have had, you can have extra points. There's not a single solitary punctuation mark in that entire paragraph. James, you should be ashamed of yourself. See me after class. Uh, Mike says, have you thought about doing the lightning phone-in that you used to do on the radio? Uh, I've thought about it, and, uh, and the answer is no. And furthermore... No, 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 no. The lightning round that I used to do in another place. Yeah, I ain't doing that. It's not that kind of show. 0345 uh, Bude, Adrian. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Very good, good. Uh, a couple of things. I want to know, when you saw Ian Jury, was he with the claim of the Kilburn and the High Roads? No, I didn't see Kilburn and the High Roads. I saw the first... The first time I saw him was uh, just before New Boots and Panties came out. he just released oh, Sex yeah. and Drugs and Rock and Roll. By oh, the way, yeah, my glamorous assistant through there 
is um, is so young that he's actually written on your um, <laughs> as the subject Ian Jury J U R Y. <laughs> what can you do with it? Eh? I just uh, the kids these days they don't they don't <laughs> exactly. know anything. I don't know what they teach them in school. It's just no, shocking. It's driving. A couple of other things. Have you noticed that the Tories have now gone from they've got a plan, whereas before it was their priority. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I saw one <laughs> That's of them. Right. Yeah, I saw one of them on the news the other day. He said uh, that Labour haven't got a plan. We've got a plan, and mm-hmm. he said we've reduced inflation. That's the first thing they've done. Yeah. <laughs> and the second thing they were going to tackle was the boats. <laughs> I thought so, that was their first priority. The country's well, priority no, is to stop the boats. Yeah. Yeah, no, because evidently they've reduced inflation, and that was the first thing. Right. Was, sure they did. Ra- rather than just stand around and wait for it to happen and then take the credit for it. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, what I find extraordinary is that yeah. they, they can claim to have reduced inflation, and if that is true, then why did they allow it to go up in the first place? <laughs> exactly, but he wanted to have it as number one as their plan. Yeah, it's his number one <laughs> plan. <laughs> right, the other thing is, what, why has it become now of MPs that everything's got to be clear? That they, I think oh. it comes Liz Truss, wouldn't it? I want to make this very clear. Very clear. clear. Oh, genuinely <laughs> unclear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, and the last thing, I'll let you go. And on. finally. Finally, thank God for that, is have you seen Donny with his, the, the trainers that he's uh, let out? Oh, well, which ones in particular are you talking about? Well, he's got a new, well, a couple of weeks ago, we've got Donny's kind of like gold trainers that he's released. Oh, the trainers. I thought you said yeah. trailers. Yeah, his, yeah, uh, his shoes. They they sold out in about 10 yeah. seconds flat, yes. Yeah. His, um, yeah. the, the, the dingalings were uh, desperately keen to uh, get their hands on a pair of those uh, gold monstrosities. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Well, one guy spent £9,000. Yes. Because they were signed by the great one. <laughs> and the last one, last one is... Have you seen his new advert where he's he's been sent down by God? God has sent Donny to sort out the world. Have you seen that one? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's incredible. <laughs> it's beyond uh, that. It's beyond I mean, parody. I, yeah. Indeed it is. <laughs> well, um, he's appealing to a certain demographic. I love the poorly yeah. educated. Yeah, and they love exactly. him right back. Yeah. yeah. All right, oh, good no, work. No, Thanks a lot, Adrian. No, Cheers, no, mate. 0345 973 yeah, we didn't talk about it very much, but uh, just he mentioned it in passing. Ian Jury, probably the, I'd say the 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 best uh, frontman of any band I ever saw. And I've seen most bands that people would say have great great frontmen. You know, I've seen the Stones, and uh, you know, Mick Jagger is uh, is uh, in a category all on his own. And I've seen uh, Roger Daltrey with the Who, uh, right at the peak of their powers in the sort of mid-70s. Um, you know, I've, I've, you name them, I've seen them. And just for, just like being mesmerising, Ian Jury was it. And he would, he would shuffle on stage because he was, you know, he was uh, quite um, physically challenged. This sort of oldish bloke, and he'd be wearing a like a, a brown flasher's coat with a... <laughs> With a um, with a bowler hat, and you just could not take your eyes off him. Great band as well. I mean, just a tremendous band, the Blockheads. But uh, as for for a, a front man, I mean, he had nothing that you would uh, write down as being the requirements of a great front man for a rock band. He didn't have any of it. He was the opposite of of what you would uh, norm. Because if you had to sit down and do like an AI version of what an ideal f- front person for a rock band would be. It would be Roger Daltrey, wouldn't it? A- at his uh, peak, looking like um, uh, looking like Jesus, essentially, <laughs> with his hair and his uh, you know the fringes on his jacket and that whole thing. And Ian Jury didn't have any of that at all. Completely the opposite. And he'd stand on stage and he'd rummage around in a in a shopping bag, and he'd pull out you know, like a scarf or something like that, and then he'd just do something weird with it. And it was just utterly engrossing. Couldn't take your eyes off him. Um, yeah. Uh, I, one of the first acts that um, I, I saw, well, him and um, the uh, uh, Alex Harvey, I'd have to put them as uh, my top two favourites of all time.
Not that you asked, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Andrew says, unions and labour, and let us not overlook the fact that individual trade union members can opt out of paying a political contribution, so the money for labour really is drawn from millions of workers, not just a few union bosses. Well, of course it's not union bosses. Yes, the money that labour uh, claw in is from, is from small amounts given by millions of people. And yet the Tories um, uh, t try to, in a desperate attempt to uh, deflect a criticism away from the way that they make money, they try to make it out like the Labour Party is in the pocket of the uh, unions. Yeah, well, even if it was true, unions represent millions of people. But the Tories, the ever-dwindling number of people that give the Tories ever more vast amounts of money just because they're nice people, I suppose. <laughs> they're, they're, um, they're, they, they've given... Um, they, they get their money, the Conservative Party, from almost nobody at all. Yeah. And I guess the alternative is to ban all political donations and give the various political parties a certain amount of money with which they can uh, run their affairs. And I'd have to say, as, as hard to swallow as that is, it would almost certainly be a better system than the one that we have at the moment, which seems to be, we'll um, just organise our affairs in the interests of the uh, couple of people who've uh, given the regime millions. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Are you trying to tell me that this is your act? Dude! Nick texts, you wanted to know why it is the case that calls coming from Japan come in clearer than calls from Great Britain. And I can tell you exactly why, says Nick. Science. That's right. I wish we had some. Tariq texts, this is why I feel there should be a knowledge test before you're, spelt wrong, allowed to vote to ensure you know what's happened and who has done what before you're, spelt wrong, allowed to vote. I don't wish to be pedantic, uh, Tarek, but would you like to uh, buy an apostrophe? No. Stuart says, I live 50% of the time in France. The comparison between the two countries isn't relevant anymore. France is superior in every respect. Roads, health, community housing, and H-A-P-P-Y nurse. <laughs> and bread, by the way. Mmm, so yummy. And butter. <gasps> Ooh, French bread and butter. And, um, well, we do pretty good cheese here, I'd say. But we do not, we cannot compare with the French with their uh, bread. We just can't. It's a fact. Any fool know that. Glasgow. Hello, Chrissy. Hi, Nick. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, about the Penny Morden thing, I, had, I didn't even know till today that she was a, a contender. Because um, <laughs> I've been kind of busy for a couple of days and it hit yeah. me like a brick. I was like... Penny Morden, mm -hmm. and there's a there's a meme going around. I don't know if you've seen it, but her in her full coronation garb, yeah, um, and she looks like the Poundland logo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I, a little bit. I didn't realise, but it is actually yeah, it's true. I yeah. thought, how can you possibly? Oh my God, she does. Well, her um, own people apparently call her pretty dormant. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, I love that that caller who had sent in. Um, or a text of it saying, and what was it he called? Uh, uh, wish, wish he'd pack, pack soon or something for R Rishi Sunak. Wish he'd, wish he'd soon pack. Wish he'd soon pack. Oh, right. He wish he'd soon that, pack. I was trying to remember that, that today and, I, and I've forgotten what it was. Wish he'd. I'm going to have to wish write this down. Pack. Wish he'd soon pack. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really clever. I thought that was really good. Yes. Um, but the, the leadership contests oh. are. It's more like a kind of relay race. It's like a game of Cluedo. So this week it's Penny Morden in the library with a candlestick. Mm -hmm. So we've got rid of, you know, and stand up and fight, stand up oh, and fight. Embarrassing. I think she was just, well, 
was she shouting as soon as in the front and he's shouting back, I'm standing, I'm standing. I don't know, but if, um, if, uh, if she had somebody write that speech for her, then they should sack that person straight away. It was, it was so awkward. I mean, talk about just it phoning so it in. Awkward. She just kept saying the same thing over and over again. It, it was just, oh. it was painful. It was, in, it was just deeply, toe-curlingly embarrassing. Stand up and it, fight. And if you stand up and fight, then the person next to you will stand up and fight. Mm. And then the person next to them will stand up and fight. And pretty soon we'll all be standing up and fighting. <laughs> I've got bar scene at a blazing saddle. Terrible. <laughs> um, I wanted to quickly um, call in about... The, the, everybody's phoning in about rats. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I've got that story. Um, just briefly, um, I've always kept cats. I'm a cat person. Mm -hmm. And they bring all sorts into the house through the cat flap. If yes. you want a cat, do not get a cat flap. You'll regret it because you'll wake up to all sorts. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah. we recently in the... I live in a village near to Glasgow and I'm surrounded by fields and we recently had an influx of rats in the village, a bit of a rat problem. Mm. It seems to have sorted itself now, but um, I have never seen my cat catch a rat before. But into the kitchen and there was a dead rat I mean, oh. it, there's no comparison to a mouse. You know the difference. Have yeah, you ever seen yeah, a rat yeah. and a mouse? There is no comparison. And my cat was sitting beside... It was dead. And she was sitting beside it, still growling. And I thought, yeah, that put up a fight, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> See, I would have I thought, thought that yeah. a rat could beat a cat. Because they so got... That. It was a small one. Oh, it was right, a small okay, one. right. But it was a rat, but it was a small one. But the tail was about the same length as the body. You know, that really thick tail they've got... And, uh, yeah, but it's the first time I've, I've heard her growl. She's mm. a voracious hunter, and she's brought all sorts of things. I think she tried to get a bison in there once because <laughs> she did it through the cat farm. <laughs> she, she just catches everything. But this rat was lying there, and, and completely dead. But I thought, yeah, you, you, you know, she's sitting growling. I go and get up, try it. Just get up, try it. I had a, yeah, I had a rat about. problem, and I don't keep rats, and they weren't pets of mine, but I had a rat issue in uh, a house that I once had. And I, I could mm. tell that because there were little droppings uh, all, here, there, and everywhere, baby. Disgusting. Awful. So uh. I got a rat person in. I got a ratter in. And he came over with um, with two Jack Russells. Have you ever seen oh, Jack yeah. Russell go after rats? Yes. It's they're absolute. They're a blur. It's exactly right. Yeah. There was some um, uh, styrofoam chips. There were loads of them. The, the previous owner had got loads of styrofoam chips in the, in the, the basement of this house. Mm. And uh, they were um, they were sort of like piled up everywhere, and, and apparently that's where the rats were in, inside there. They made nests in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> and these dogs, he just said, "Go on, go on," <laughs> and they they just disappeared. <laughs> and I, I I saw one of them just leap into the air, and then it it vanished into this pile of chips, and you couldn't see it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just disappeared, and then it would come back, and it would have one of its uh, one of these rats in its mouth, and it would just Oh. Pop it down, and it would zoom off and, and go get another one. And pretty soon there was this pile of dead oh. dead rats. They I absolutely loved it. And but did, did you not just feel a, just a tiny bit sorry for no. them? No, let me think but, about that. No, 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 <laughs> no. I, I know, but it just looks so violent. You know, it's horrible. I have yeah. seen it. I've seen clips of it. And it mm -hmm. looks awful. Yeah. Um, but my cats will bring anything in. Susie brought in a... That was Maisie that brought in the rat. Yeah. Susie. Um, spelled like Susie and the Banshees, by the way, because she had black, <laughs> fluffy fur. Right. And when I, I, I thought, Susie and the Banshees, she looks like... I better call her Robert Smith from The Cure. That's a rather boring name. Um, but she brought a frog in once, a large frog. Um, and oh. it was halfway up the stairs. I was sitting in the living room, and all I heard was this strange sound. Whee! And I thought, what is that weird sound? And I went through to the hall, and she's sitting proudly on the stairs, looking at this cat. And it was a frog, large frog. And if frogs are distressed. I didn't know this. They, they make that sound. They go, whee! Well, me too. I, I thought, <laughs> I thought she'd burst it. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have thought that a cat would find a frog to be uh, a tasty snack. The, the kind of snack you can eat between meals without ruining your appetite. I wouldn't have thought that a cat would go for a frog. Because don't frogs well, secrete some sort of uh, icky substance? <laughs>
Y- yes. What what amazed me was there wasn't a mark on it because cats have got sharp teeth. Frogs look kind of uh, fragile. Yeah. And I'm amazed that she got it through. Not only that, but I swear, honestly, on my life here, she brought it in two nights in a row because I took <laughs> it out <laughs> and I put it in my daughter's fairy garden, way at the back of the garden, right? Um, where I thought it lived, and the next mm. night when I was sitting. Whee! Right. And of course, she's brought that thing in again. <laughs> and and the frog sitting there thinking, God, here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least it wasn't a rat. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for the good news there, uh, Chrissy. Cheers, my dear. Ta ta. 0345 Wish he'd soon pack. <laughs> Yeah, and that's true. They, he doesn't really say much about his parties anymore, does he? Because nobody believes a single solitary word that man says anymore. His number one priority was getting down inflation, and um, and he succeeded in that. Yeah, no, you haven't. You, abs- you have absolutely no effect on uh, inflation of any kind whatsoever. And the thing is, he's smart enough to know that. He's just hoping that we aren't. It's kind of annoying, really isn't it? I mean, they keep telling us things that they are smart enough to know aren't true. They're just hoping that we're stupid enough not to realise they're not true. Uh, Which I find objectionable. I mean, it just really rubs my fur up the wrong way. Like I've been uh, dragged through the cat flat by Susie. (laughs) Rob says, why does your show always have a very faded low-frequency bass pattern as if there's a club next door? I always think it's my neighbours having a party. Having a party. It's because the uh, the kids downstairs on um, uh, it's, it's probably the people on Capital, isn't it? it? Is who is it then? It, we have got it's the pub. You know, we've got the pub just next to us down. No, 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 no. I think it's the kids from Capital Radio. They, oh, oi! Turn that racket down. They're um, they're sitting in a, a, a what's supposed to be a soundproof booth, and so am I. And I can hear it thump, thump, thump coming through the floor. Shocking. Get the police on the phone right now. I mean it. But I've asked them where once. I've asked them a thousand times. <laughs> if, if I wasn't so frightened of them, I'd get, go down there and give them a piece of my mind. Winnie says, I'm rolling around laughing at the thought of a rescue rat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When walking down Earl's Court Road with my son, a giant cat-sized rat nonchalantly walked into a pub as we were leaving. Sounds like the beginning of a joke. This rat walked into a pub. Don't wait around, because I, I haven't got a pub. There is no punchline to that. Uh, I haven't thought of one. I'll think of one uh, later, when, when it's too late. You know, after the show's finished, I'll think of something hilarious. <laughs> I, I've got so much to um, talk about, but uh, I keep getting these phone calls. Why, why can't these people just leave me alone? I wanted to talk about Boris going to Venezuela. I wanted to talk about... Th- there's this extraordinary column that was in the, uh, the Super Soraway Telegraph by a columnist called Ben Wright about um, the failings of the government. And uh, what, what's extraordinary is about it, uh, uh, what is extraordinary about it, is that it appeared in the Telegraph. And he just rips them apart. I wanted to talk about sewage in gardens. Disgusting. And um, Liz Truss's trip and the um, MP's workday getting shorter. Maybe, just maybe, I'll have time before the end of the show to uh, squeeze in uh, one of those stories, if not more. Let's see what happens as we co- as we continue. Beverly, Mike. Hi, Nick. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this subject she's going to talk about. <laughs> Are you being sarcastic? <laughs> No, not at all, no. Okay. I mean, um, no, I mean, I, I was just thinking about Sunak and, and thinking, well, yeah, the next election that's coming up, it would be reasonable to assume that the Tories are going to lose. Yes. But he'll win in his own constituency because it's one of the safest in, in the UK. Well, what was his, um, yeah. what was his, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, his, um, by what margin did he win by? It, what's that word? <laughs> Just about 20,000 to 30,000. Right. But but it's Richmond. I mean, it's absolutely stone-cold Tory. So he's going to get his seat back. But he's going to lose the election, at which point the Conservative Party will vomit him onto the back benches. He isn't going to stand for that. He's not going to go onto the back benches. He'll be in California before the last last votes have been counted. 
Yeah, he's going to resign. He's going to disappear. And then I was thinking, well, his wife is still a numdum. She's agreed voluntarily to pay the taxes though she wasn't. Yeah, right. But she still claims that she's an inhabitant of India. Is she, does well, she? <laughs> well, 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 that's going to do us. Well, and then I'm thinking, okay, you think a bit more about it, and you think, you remember the Piers Morgan thing when he took the bet? And uh, then he said he wasn't a, he wasn't a betting man, and then it oh, yeah, that right. he, he had an account with the workmakers, and he was spread betting on cricket. Well, just say, coming up to the last couple of weeks before the election, or the last week, if he took a huge spread bet on the Tories being reduced to, say, 30 to 80 feet, mm. and he sabotaged the programme at the last <laughs> minute to make it happen, he could make millions. <laughs> Yeah, he, I'm not a betting man. He actually said that, didn't he? He that's how he made his money by betting. I mean, they don't call it betting; they call it um, you know merchant banking or hedge funding or whatever uh, uh, phrase they want to use. But it's just gambling. That's what it is. That's what those people do. It's what this country does for a living. They we gamble with other people's money, and if we lose it, well. That's no big problem, because if we lose enough, then the government's going to bail us out and give us our money back. It's like the best casino in the world for these people. He gambled on something bad happening. It happened. The rest of the world took a giant dive, and he made a hundred million quid. Yeah, well, he, short, he shorted the bank. I mean, that, that massive bank that yeah. um, was... Con that that precipitated the uh, the financial crash of 2007. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I mean, he was instrumental in the uh, entire world taking a bath. Yeah, so, I mean, he basically does bet. I mean, he's a very shrewd better. The guy's not stupid. But it just struck me, I wonder if he actually could sort of spread bet on the uh, result of the election. He could actually influence that. I mean, it's like insider trading, isn't it, really? Well, that's what, that's what, the, uh, <laughs> that, that's what this country runs on, insider training, trading. We, we pretend that we don't, but that's exactly what... Uh, is. I mean, th the reason that, that you and me, Mike, are going to be forever poor is because uh, we don't know the kind of people that can pass on the sort of information that uh, those people in the giant shiny buildings in London and, uh, um, and Mayfair um, uh, use to um, uh, organise their affairs, insider trading. That's exactly what is going on there. Yeah, it's like development. I mean, I was involved in the construction industry for years, and there's loads of insider stuff goes on. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, you got on this bob. I mean, he was passing a, a scheme in another constituency and getting that constituency MP to pass a scheme in his constituency. You have it to wonder why. Yeah, of course it does. You have to wonder. Uh, uh, well, people do wonder why somebody who's uh, w worth a, a bob or two wants to uh, be uh, an MP, and, and I, I would imagine in uh, large numbers that is precisely why, so that they will be in receipt of inside information. They know. Uh, something that can move a market before it actually happens, because it's, it will be government policy. And, uh, and to pretend that if that's what they do for a living, they wouldn't act on that information, it's just uh, absolutely ludicrous. Of course they do. Yeah, if you know what's going to be privatised next, you know what to move in on, yeah. don't you? Or if, uh, if, if a company is going to get fined by the government for doing, uh, you know, whatever it might be, then I think a person in receipt of that information would uh, act accordingly, if that's what they do for a living. Of course they will. Yeah. I mean, I'm not suggesting that uh, Titchy Suitsize is uh, guilty of uh, any of the above, but I'm sure that he knows a lot of people that uh, perhaps might be. Yeah, I think so. And I look forward to those revelations you're going to give us, Nick. Oh, OK. <laughs> All right. <laughs> on the edge of his seat, he is. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Aren't you trying to be funny? Because I'm a lot of laughs. Kath texts, did you hear about the guy who tricked Tucker Carlson into interviewing him and believed he was now a fired digital marketing assistant from Kensington Palace responsible for the dodgy photo? He told him that the picture was taken in December and that he had to edit out a Christmas tree from the background. He convinced Tucker Carlson's team with an employment contract that he faked. He said it was on Kensington Palace headed notepaper with every little helps, Tesco's slogan written on it in Latin. The, co <laughs> the contract also said that the palace reserved the right to remove a limb of their choice if they weren't satisfied with his work. Um, Tucker Carlson, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. And I didn't believe a single solitary word of that, Kath. I thought that, that was total fake news. 
until I looked it up on the uh, World Wide Wait uh, during that last break. And it is apparently completely correct in every respect. <laughs> Good grief. YouTubers Josh Peters and Archie Manners are the duo behind Goon Squad Productions and the platform's Josh and Archie channel, where they regularly prank celebrities and other notables in their frequently viral interviews. On Thursday, the pair revealed a major prank on former Fox News commentator Tucker Carlson, where they took credit for editing Kate Middleton's infamous Mother's Day photo. <laughs> And uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can uh, read that at your leisure. Jim Sex, uh, spoiler, Jesus dies at the end of the new statement. New t n the New Testament. Well, don't tell us. And Sam says, maybe as a thank you to racist Tory donors, the Tory party could send them on a little mini break to places like North Korea, along with a friend from the Tory party to keep them company. Well, that sounds like a good idea. I mean, that's just them being nice. Megan says, not that one. Well, I assume. Do you think that Karen Middleton will feel sympathy for Megan now she has had a tiny taste of what Megan has been subjected to for years? No, I didn't think so either, says Megan. Maybe it is that one. <laughs> and uh, Martin says, do you believe that Ian Dury Reasons to be Cheerful was the first rap record? No, not even close. I've had a debate about this, says Martin. Who with? Now, the first rap record was, um, well, there, there may have been one just before. I mean, if you go back to, um, I think, Sly and the Family Stone, I think they did something that uh, might be there or thereabouts. Could be, this could be called rap. And uh, maybe Funkadelic I had um, something that, along those lines. But the first proper, proper, proper one was um, one of the most famous uh, rap songs of all time. And it was uh, the, the one to um, Good Times. By Sheik, you know, doodlem, boom, boom, dum, boom, 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 that. It was a rapper's delight, the one that went on and on and on. The hippie to hippie, a hippie hip hop, and don't stop rocking to the bang, bang, boogie, that something about to the boogie to be, or, or something like that. Uh, memories are uh, may, uh, may, oh, message coming in from next door. Nay O, a song by the Jubilees, about 35 years before that. Says who? Says me. Yeah, what do you know about it? Well, I listened to rap, and uh, Noah by the Jubilees came out in 1944, which I believe is about 33 years before Rapper's Delight. God, what a smart aleck, eh? You believe that? <laughs> what I have to deal with here is just uh, extraordinary. It's, um, you know, I'm... Um, uh, it's a form of abuse, as a matter of fact. JJ says, Where does the money come from to pay for the pensions of all the Prime Ministers that we have been lumbered with since David... <laughs> lumbered with, Bodge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Lumbered with since David Cameron. I suppose it's down to the taxpayers again, but why should we have our noses rubbed in it just because this government can't provide us with a proper leader? I'll just call them the con party. Well, yes. I mean, pensions is uh, probably not what you're thinking of. You're, you're thinking of the amount of money that they get to organise their office, which is based on the assumption that they are actually doing us a favour. You know, they're working, <laughs> working diligently in their office for the benefit of the people. The little people, not leprechauns. And so they get, um, I can't remember how much it is at, uh, off the top of my head, it's, like, it's a six-figure sum. They're doing just fine, don't you worry about that. And, uh, well, you know, paper clips cost an enormous amount of money, so they have to get uh, properly remunerated for their efforts. And um, there's so many of them now, I can barely remember how many we've had. Can you, can you remember, uh, Liz? I'm genuinely unclear. She's just genuinely unclear about the number that we've had uh, over the last uh, 14 years, but it's uh, getting on for a boatload. Andy says, Penny Mordant probably represents the more humane face of the Tory party. I prefer her as a leader to, say, Suella Braverman. However, even thinking about such things make you realise what a parlous state the Tory party is in. Yeah, and by uh, extension, us. Us poor dopes who pay taxes. I don't know, I, I mean, I would, um... 
I, I would encourage the, the Tory party to go out on a limb. You know, pick, uh, pick someone uh, from the, the, the wacky end of, uh, the, uh, the, of the right wing, of the right wing party. And by that uh, method, they will probably guarantee not being in power for uh, a dog's age, a generation at least. Which is why I would um, also uh, um, encourage the Reform Party to put up as many candidates for the next general election, assuming that we're allowed to have one, as they possibly can, because it's about time that the right wing were the right wing vote was split, as has been the uh, case with the the left wing vote for as long as anybody can remember. That's why the Tory parties keep winning over and over and over again with uh, less than 50% of the vote. I think only on one occasion since the Second World War have they got more than 50% of the vote, and yet they still they stay managed to get 100% of the power about two-thirds of the time. What a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. <laughs> uh, Hey, I should uh, mention my best of podcast. If you've got half an hour and you wish to be amused, then it'll be right up your alley. It's called The Nick Abbott Habit. Comes out on a Monday. Half an hour of concentrated amusement from old shows. Put together by my own hands. My personal digits have been all over it. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. It's called The Nick Abbott Habit. In the uh, most recent one, I talk about uh, a car that I've seen. Uh, the the classic classic Cadillac, the one with the um, with the the big big fin, with the booster rockets on either side of it. They look, that's exactly what they look like. They uh, they look like rocket uh, engines either side of the big fin, but they are the uh, the, the rear lights. A marvelous thing. I put a picture of it on uh, Twitter just the other week. I was uh, going on about it. I thought it'd be um, educational to put a picture of what it was that I was talking about on this podcast, which you can hear asking for it by name on an internet near you. It's called the Nick Abbott Habit. You'll love it. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Right, so what are we doing? Given we are doing a radio show, but it does remind me that I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. I won't go into a long spiel about it, but uh, it is a delight, and I think you'll find it uh, quite amusing. It makes me laugh, and it uh, comes out twice a week, Mondays and Fridays. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Now, if you want us to have a bash at your issue, because it's a problem-solving podcast uh, with the uh, emphasis on funny... But if you want us to have a bash at your dilemma, then send it to Nick and Carol at global.com. N I C K A N D C A R O L at global.com and prepare for total satisfaction. Oh, right, yeah. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? Belfast, Brendan. Good evening. Yes, Brendan. Um, and uh, happy to progress there. Hey, Brendan, Mail. can you speak a bit closer to the phone? No, no, please. A couple of three seconds, yes. An ecstasy of family. Ah, there you are. Ah, AirPods, it's uh, not my fault. Uh, I think AirPods are pretty modern, so your station may not be. (laughs) (laughs) We're not compatible, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, you may or may not... uh, wear this as a badge of honour. But I'm currently on uh, Capitol Hill with uh, the Irish delegation to the White House and my aide handed me a phone and said, look at this. I immediately thought it was, you know, maybe we were bombing Beirut or something. It was Nick Abbott has said that uh, your man that sang Hit me with the rhythm stick, mm. and uh, Ian Jury and the Blackheads yeah. was the best ever frontman in the history of frontmen. Yes. Right. So, I didn't like that. Huh? Yeah, I thought, I've got to find somebody who's better than Ian Jury as a frontman. Yes, go ahead. I couldn't. And that's basically it. I couldn't. 
He definitely was. And not only was he the best, I've never seen him live. What? And never, never, ever seen the injury in the black his live. How can you and know that he's the best then? Because this is what I was about to say. His persona was able to overcome TV, radio, records, CDs. Yeah. He still came through. It just burst out of the speaker at you. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it didn't matter if you could see him live or not, although you're very privileged, obviously. But plebs like me are still allowed to <laughs> appreciate him. Right. Because he still affected me, even though I didn't see him live. And you immediately are... Did, did you notice your musical snobbery jumped in? Well, is it hurting you new? Hurting you new? Well, I'm telling you, Hurricane, no. He transcended all that. No, I, I restate my case. How can you know that anybody's a great frontman if you haven't actually seen them? I mean, you could, you could say that he's a great singer or he's a tremendous lyricist because he had he, he was sort of world-class in two things. He was a great mm -hmm. frontman and, as a lyricist, uh, just absolutely tremendous. I mean, the, the lyrics that he came out with are just great. Um, and so, I mean, you could say that Bob Dylan was a great lyricist, but as a frontman, not really. I mean, he didn't really have anything uh, mesmeric about him. I mean, I know he's not dead yet, but uh, kind of, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> a little bit. He's a little bit dead. Has been for uh, quite a while. I mean, he must be, what, 150, 160 years old, something like that. He sounds that way anyway. But, um, yeah, as a, as a frontman, I mean, he's right up there at the very, very peak and a lyricist as well multi-talented yeah and if you're going to talk about front man you know and w what people perceive mm. to be a front man you know let's get Jesus was a front man <laughs> 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 right Okay. Let's, yeah, I suppose that that's that is true. Yeah. I mean, I'm not not sure about the backing about band, that. but uh, yeah. And what I want you to think about that on St Patrick's Day. Right. Okay. Here in Ireland, we're all thinking of you, Nick. All right. You are a legend. Okay. We love you. And, and uh, leave it with me, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll think about it a lot. Thanks a lot, Brendan. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Christian texts um, regarding the, they don't talk much about their priorities. Under my leadership, the government's priorities are your priorities. The people's priorities. It's the country's number one priority. It's my number one priority up and down the country, and that will be our focus. He's gripping it. Yeah, they don't talk about their priorities very much anymore, and uh, they, they mostly talk about their plans. We have a plan, 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 plan and plan, plan and plan, plan. Or you just go back to square one. That's yes. why it's so important. We stick stick to the plan. Yeah, sure. Well, otherwise we go back to square one with the Labour Party, which sounds fantastic to me. Oh. Can we do that straight away? Anyway, on that subject, Christian text: the Tories aren't saying much about their forty new hospitals anymore either. That is true. Yeah. Uh, here's a very very upset caller uh, or texter rather uh, called Rose, who says the following: It's always so funny, isn't it? Animals being killed, putting up a fight, etc. They'll always, they'll be all sorts of intriguing deaths phoned in now, I suppose. All set off by that poor chap last night, unwisely saying that he loved his two rats. But never mind, I've switched off, says Rose. <laughs> Rose has uh, switched off, or so she says. Well, bye bye. See you, Rose. It's, it's called life. Death. Part of it. And um, I didn't kill the rats, that was a cat. Matt texts, agree with producer on first rap. Well, we could uh, be here from uh, now until the end of time uh, d discussing who did the first rap. Who, who spoke on a record first? I don't believe that there is a definitive answer to that question. Um, I do want to fit in some uh, other things before we go, but these people, they just keep calling and calling. Glasgow. Hello, Gerard. Yeah, hi there. Yeah, it's just to disagree with you once again. <gasps> Can you believe it? <laughs> so I'm disagreeing with this now. And Ian Jury was fantastic, absolutely brilliant. But 
uh, Johnny Rotten, who based his act on uh, what's his name's performance of Richard the Third. He based his act in that, and that's what he was really good at. It was a fantastic performance what Johnny Rotten did. Also, um, if you're that, I also thought that uh, Jim Morrison of the Doors was very sexy. A different kind of first man performance, I suppose. Yeah. So, um, what do you think of that? Yeah, I, I disagree with uh, both of those. I mean... With both of them? Yeah. Um, uh, OK, John, I didn't ever see the Pistols live. It was one of the few punk bands yeah, I that... really, really respect you for doing that. Right, uh, the well. punk bands that I saw was... Uh, were, uh, no, I didn't ask. I didn't ask, Gerard. <laughs> Sorry? I didn't ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's one of the few punk bands that I didn't see. There's the Sex Pistols, but I, you know, I saw them on TV right enough, and yeah. it, it looked, um, you know, uh, riveting... But mm -hmm. not really, no. Not not in the pantheon so. of greats. No, I do not think so, no. Oh, well. Shame about what's uh, happened to him, oh, uh, hey. Yes. All right, thanks a lot, Gerard. Now, I thought he was going to say uh, that Alex Harvey, see, coming from Glasgow, I thought he would have been uh, talking about one of his own, but uh, apparently not. That would have been my uh, numbers one and two. Difficult to decide w which is the absolute top, but I'm going to go Ian Jury, uh, Alex Harvey, and then everybody else. Tristan Tex, rat went into a pub. I was in a pub once when a rat came in wearing a tricorn hat and brandishing a cutlass. He demanded the landlord hand over all of his pastries or he'd attack him. The landlord, fearing for his life, obliged and the rodent walked out. The landlord shouted, who even are you? And he turned around and said, I'm a pie rat. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I'm in pain. The actual agony is ex uh, being experienced over here. Brian says, uh, newsflash, Jesus does not die at the end of the New Testament. He rises from the dead on the third day and ascends into heaven. Keywords, ascension and Easter. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to uh, Smug's uh, yearly tweet on that subject. My view. Yeah, we know what your view is. We know full well what your view is. And Ben says, Rapper's Delight was the first hip-hop song because people asked for the one that went hip-hop, a hippity, uh, hip, uh, a hippity, hop, and a hoppity, hippity. Yeah. And all of that. Don't get me started on that because uh, it, once you start, then uh, 13 minutes later, you're still, <laughs> still singing it. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Come on, we're running late. We are running late. Josh texts the next leader of the Conservative Party should be Marc Francois. <laughs> yeah, well, I heard that he was in the army and he wasn't trained to lose. <laughs> Give him a go, why not? I mean, it couldn't be any worse. It, I don't think at this point it actually could be any worse. I mean, just for the giggles, why not? Brussels, Emma. Hi, hi Nick. Yeah, so I was, so I was just saying to your colleague, I mean, you know, I, I think Penny Morden, that would be cool because she's actually um, trained as an actor, so she would be quite entertaining um, and she's very good at, you know, entertaining and, you know, she could really speak well. And so that that would be nice. No. Because I I do find I can't promise I can't when he's on I turn it down because I can't listen to him. He's just so awful to listen to. Who him? So, who him? Rishi Oh, yeah. That's a nasally whine. It's, it's just awful. painful. It, yeah. yeah. So that that would be an improvement. But then I was sort of saying to your colleague, you know, actually it's 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 beyond a joke because she let's not forget in 2016 said. If we carry on being a member of the U European Union, then we'll have an invasion from Turkey. All these Turkish people will come in, and I just find that so horrific. So it's worse than racist. that. It's, it's worse than that, Emma. She she is the one who thought that Liz Truss was the answer to the question. Absolutely. If Liz Truss is the answer to the question, what is the question? What's the question. <laughs> And, you know, seriously, she said, I don't remember, there's an interview with her and Eddie Mayer, and she says, yes, there'll be an invasion of Turkish people. Yeah. And it's, oh, Tur you know, these are people, and that's the point. You know, I've got loads of, I mean, you know, you might imagine living in Brussels, there are many Turkish people here, one of our great 
good neighbours is Turkish. And that's so disgusting, you know, this idea of kind of othering people. Yeah. And that's who she really is. Well, that's who, that's who many of them that. are. That so well, that they, is yeah, who many of yeah. them are because it's all they have left is othering people. It's pointing to a small identifiable minority and blaming them for everything that ails the nation. They do, they yeah. they can't go on a positive ticket because they don't have anything positive to talk about after fourteen years of running the country. They can't think of a single thing that has improved I under that running, time. But running, the, I think, say running is very you know kind. You know, isn't it really? It's it, they run, run the country. They've just oh, they've just been around it, while it's basically. been uh, yeah. They, they just stood by while it uh, took care of itself. Collapsed, but yeah. not but not very well. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Emma. That's the view from Brussels. Uh, Carl says, Nick, have you taken down your Christmas decorations yet? <laughs> yes, of course. Why would you even say that? Uh, it took a while. I mean, I believe that uh, Her Majesty, the uh, the ex-Queen, used to take him down on, um, was it like the 13th of February or something like that, the 6th of February, something like that. And so I kept them up for that period, not because I'm a uh, royalist a fan or anything, but it's just... It just seems like the worst time of the year to take all the, uh, all the, you know, the, the happiness down. Oh. When it's cold and miserable and dark, why would you want to do that? Because then all you're just, you're just staring at the walls. It just reinforces how miserable everything is if you take the lights down in um, January. It, it never made any sense to me. Just keep them up for, uh, you know, like a month at least, all of January, why not? To transition into the light better. Queen, uh, message coming in from next door. Queen Elizabeth chose her decorations to be taken down on the 6th of February. The date held a special significance to her because it's the anniversary of, as far, of her father's death in 1952. Well, I did not know that. The stuff you learn on this show, educational, no? No. Orpington, hey, Ray. Hello, Nick. Hi. Just a quick question about rats. Yes. Um, I um, was waiting for a bus years and years ago in the early 70s, and um, I uh, um, was wearing some flared trousers, and um, I was waiting by a camera shop, and it was late at night, and uh, basically in the, in, in the doorway of the shop there uh, was some newspapers, and um, I was with the girlfriend at the time, and she said to me, there seems to be some movement in those papers. I said, no, no, no. And I got closer, and this rat ran out from underneath the newspapers, ran up my leg, uh, because I had flared trousers on. They were very loose, and they were very wide. Run up my leg. Now, wait a minute, yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did it run up the outside? Inside. Inside? Inside the trousers, that's right. It, 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 because they were quite wide. Because, I mean, that drew flared trousers. Right, 1970s, in those days. yeah. Mm -hmm. 19, I remember 70s. it well. And basically, basically, it ran up my leg, inside the leg, and my, uh, um, the, the actual material of the trousers, got past the knee, and I actually sort of just whacked it with my, like a karate chop. I just sort of whacked <laughs> it back. <laughs> and it turned around, would you believe, Nick? It turned around, ran down the... Down, d down, down the leg again. Ran out of the bottom of the trousers and ran, and ran back into the newspapers. Right. You're it asking me if I, me. you're asking me if I believe it or not. Well, uh, well I, the I, then I'm, I'm saying not. Well, it, that is what happened. <laughs> okay. And I mean, the girl, the girlfriend said to me, "Kill it," and I said, "I just can't do it," and we walked away from it. But yeah. that's the closest. Closest experience I've ever had. Yeah, leave it. Just, just, just leave it, Ray. It ain't worth it because uh, those, <laughs> no. those rats will put up a fight. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> All right, thank you. Nick. All right, thank you, Ray. Yes, I remember flares very, very well. Awful they were. Uh, I think they've come back, haven't they? The kids these days, they're uh, they, they think they're hip and with it, but we've been through that uh, pain before. And you wait till it rains. And those flares start flapping around their ankles and make it difficult to uh, motivate around the place. I r vividly remember the first time in my life that I put on uh, like straight-legged jeans. It felt like freedom. I thought, oh, bliss! <laughs> it's, it's like it's like I can walk. Uh, yeah, flares. It's a big no from me. And furthermore, no, 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 no. I mean, just awful. 
Why would anybody... Who came up with that stupid idea, by the way? I mean, what for? All that extra material, why? Uh, Alex says, Ray, who was waiting for a bus in the 1970s, has it arrived yet? <laughs> has it arrived yet? <laughs> um, Martin says, Nick, logically, is 30p Lee worth 30 penny mordants? Well, that is a good point. Somebody should definitely look into that. And um, Mike says, wasn't Jim Reeves the first rapper with that song about a deck of cards and the like? No. I'm going to go with no. Say that the, m more information from next door. God, he's an absolute uh, fountain of uh, useless information. Or pouring his uh, info all over me. <laughs> Sailors invented flares. I'm not sure that's true. It's thought that British and American sailors first wore bell-bottom trousers in the 19th century because it made it easier to snag a man who had fallen overboard. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> uh, and neither do I believe that sailors invented anything of the sort. Tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, good evening, Nick. Yes, Jan. Yeah, yeah, um, what do you think about um, that whole uh, bell-bottom issue? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say about well, it. Well, why, um, why did you call up about it? No, I didn't. I was calling up about Penny Morden and, and something else. Oh, th so, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. And, and I didn't want, I don't want to say anything about rats either. I, 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 I'm turning my stomach. <laughs> 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 but listen, about Penny Morden, I mean, mm -hmm. quite a lot of different things that you said. And, and but I, I actually haven't heard anything she said. I just remember her you know, stealing the, the coronation almost with carrying that sword, the King Charles coronation. Yeah. And and that that, that she's put, she's she's in the sort of national strike, I think, after strike it after seeing her in that position. You know, she's quite um, stunning, I think, in some ways. Stunning. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, well, I mean, okay. she was very, she was very um, stunning. Yes, yeah, so stunning. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's stunning and queen. brave. Yes. But but I think um, I, I've got a personal point to say which which might not go down well uh -oh. with people but uh -oh. that afterwards i'll come back to that after i've said something oh, there might not be any it. after you might want to say it straight away oh no i just no i mean i think it's that why they why they um want she she's a candidate that that um is a moderate and she didn't get in well, she, I, I think those on the right a candidate that's moderate she she wanted liz trust to be the prime minister absolutely what's moderate no. about that no, no, I don't know about that. But, but I mean, she's 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 considered that she's considered by the right of the party to be a bit woke when it comes to gender <laughs> things. And uh, I mean, that's news to me. But that's yeah. what they say. Mm. And but she's she's just one, one of those people that does the wokey cokey. Wokey dokey. Yeah. 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 But she just narrowly missed getting in. Um, get, you know, lo lost the race between Sunak right. and Trump. It, it, it don't but make now, no never mind one way or the other. But now they say that she's probably the only one who can pull. So the, 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 the a rabbit out of the hat. Yeah. And I think she, this is my view, is that the, this, those public boys had, you know, she's a bit, she could be subconsciously a kind of matronly figure to all those public <laughs> school boys. And, and um, you know, they, 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 they would, they, they, the matrons yeah. in those schools. Dreaming were, were, of getting was, the belt from matron. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be uh, remotely surprised, Jan. Yes. <laughs> a yearning wistfully for it, yes. Um, and on that um, slightly discomforting note, that's it. Thanks, Jan.
Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go. It thanks Jan. Gotta go.